Live on a Friday, we're all in the same damn place. Happy, happy, happy Cinco de Mayo. This is all natural energy, actually. <laughs> <laughs> we're good. We haven't gotten after it yet. It's not happy hour yet. <laughs> yeah, real, real people. Real. <laughs> 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 really have to be. Throw it over. <laughs> I'm excited, bro. I am really excited. And you know why for later. I can't wait. I know what you're excited about. Ooh, Isn't this? Oh, yeah. There's a little you hit can, you in my Give little... everyone a little teaser. Hey, we got a little. Card opening coming up, boxes. We got some Bowman's a couple years ago this year. This is why we do podcasts, baby. Let's get <laughs> Bowman's it. best. Yes. Bowman Heritage. Our, our guy, our expert, Nate from Slab Stocks, Ooh. is going to join us as we rip packs towards the end of the show. Mm -hmm. And he told me at least eight autos. So this has, this has four. This has four. So at least eight autos in these two alone. Yeah. We could pull a little Julio Rodriguez. Julio rookie. Rodriguez. Oh yeah, Vlad Guerrero, Marcelo Meyer, Vladdy yeah. Jr. Sometimes you pull a prospect. It's it's serious. Remember, last year, Jason Dominguez card went for like one. Oh. Remember that it was like one fifty. Oh. Might find one in there. You never yeah, know. Yeah, we know. might be having a real Cinco de Mayo Ooh. later. So <laughs> stay tuned, baby. I'm okay? going right downstairs. I'm <laughs> cracking open a little tequila. I didn't even say tequila. <laughs> tequila. Yep. Like we say in Jersey. Guess what? I'm pouring some on you, <laughs> and I'm licking it off you guys. Let's have some fun. No, I don't care. We're you going to here first. Six figure card. <laughs> Six figures. Go We're going crazy. to Sizzler afterwards too. Let's go. Matt right. Gelb from the Athletic covers the Phillies. One of the best writers in the biz. He's going to join us, and our guy, one of our regulars, Ross Strickling. Uh, Strickling. Strickling. <laughs> Strickling. Let's let's, let's uh, calm the nerves down. Remember now. Rod Strickland. <laughs> Yes. Rod Strickland. Yeah. Hot wow. Rod. Yeah. Hot Hunter Rod. Strickland. Great ball. Hunter, keep going. But, but yeah. Chicken Strip's going to join us in a little bit as well. So we'll have a little happy Cinco de Mayo with him. And also with Chicken Strip, we'll go over the lack of Chicken Strips that have been eaten lately <laughs> for his ball club. They are going through something. Mm. Okay. Stay tuned. Runs? The Giants. Yeah. Runs. A lot, runs. a lot of runs. A on the field. A lot of runs. Baseball of runs. and all. Yeah. yeah. They need more runs on the field. So happy Cinco de Mayo to everyone. And also, I'd like to say foulterritoryshop.com is, uh, is happening right now. If you want a shirt, if you want a hat, all that stuff, logo, the whole thing, check it out. Ready mm -hmm. to go? I'm ready to rock. Let's dive man. in. Let's Please charge go. the damn mound. Let's go. Presented by our friends at Tyrus Baseball. Looking good. And let's start with the Tampa Bay Rays who, first off, are on an absolute tear mm. at the moment. They're 20 games above 500 already. They're 26-6. and six. Of course, the 13-0 start. Now they're 13-6 and six since that time period. They just swept up the Rays. Do you know how many wins they're on pace for, by the way? Give me a guess. Like, how many wins do you think they're on pace for? Do it without, don't think 118. What do you got? 122. 
131. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. 131. I'll take the under. I'll take the under as well. Right. Okay. What's that coming off at? Hey, yes. You're going to have to bet a million just to get 10 bucks back to win now. <laughs> I wonder what the, uh, what the win total is for them at this point. I'll try and check it out during the show. But a lot of controversy from that series in the past few days. First off, let's start with Brandon Lau out at second base because of a head first slide that landed him on the bag until it didn't. Let's show that. <laughs> Everybody's confused. Oh, it's Josh Lowe. Gotcha. Okay. We're still on. Josh Lowe pushed off. Sorry. Wow in the notes. I got a guess. And I forgot who it was. Kevin Cash is pissed. So we're looking at the replay. And for the podcast audience, I just want to be able to give some play-by-play here. Kratzy, can you explain what happened to our buddy Josh Lowe? I mean, he just went through the... I mean, to me, it looked like he was going to hold on to the bag. And then he was right on the edge, and I don't think I don't think Bay was trying to push him off, but he was just trying to keep his hand on his glove, and he just – he went from here and pushed it over. There was, there was no – I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know what they're looking at in replay because we'd never have any kind of explanation. Never. Never. Like, it'd be, it'd be totally fine if we just, hey, calm it in. Hey, yeah, we're looking at it right here. We got the second angle. It looks like he pushed his hand off the bag, and we're still going to call it. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Listen, I have a different perspective on this, to be honest with you. From the replay, it looks like his hand kind of came off by itself. Now, as an infielder, we're taught. If there's any inkling where you can push his hand off, as Bush League as it sounds, to get that out, we're going to – I'm going to be like – I'm going to Keep his it. momentum. Yeah. No doubt. I'm going to inch it a little no. more. Like, like, I want you to wait for – I'm going to inch it, man. So – as an infielder, if you got a hand on there, might, might as well try because an umpire most of the time will be like, hey, hey, no, 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 time. You pushed right. him off. Yep. He didn't say. But we'll talk about Adrian in a little bit, the umpire. who, who <laughs> Well, Adrian him. called it safe. Yeah. Oh, he called it safe. Yeah, and they went to No, no, but I mean, New we'll York talk about no. him more. New York said no. Yeah, so I feel like his hand was too far off the base. So if you can get a little more pressure on that hand, I think totally. Bay did the right thing there, honestly, you know. I've seen worse ones than that. I've been part of them. But the guy on like, ha, phrase, good try, you know? <laughs> and that's happened before, too, as well. So you haven't because you catch. Right. If they touch it, they're safe. So right. should you be allowed to do that is the question. I like yes physicality. And no. Yes and no. But if you no. push a guy off, yeah. where doesn't it start to get to a slippery slope? Yes and where no. Where I'm just yeah. going to be like, but all listen, right, well, no. is this subjective, too, like the baseballs? But listen, I've also done this before. We're trying to win the game, right? Oh, for Big sure. time. I catch a ball in front of the base. I dive at him. So now my momentum takes me towards him and he falls off a little bit. Now it's up to the umpire to figure out too, sure. was it its discretion? Did he do that on purpose? Did I find a way to get him out, you know, and get away with one? So, I mean, there's all things you can do, but the more, you know, you got to do some more curls, some more triceps like you got, just keep that pressure on him. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's the right call. I don't think it was egregious. I just think once the hand kind of slipped off a little bit, I'm going to keep the pressure on you. And he definitely pushed. I mean, yeah. he, there was definitely pressure put on yeah. there, and it, he was holding on to it. But what I like, the Pirates, you know, we're talking about a team before the season that's going to be a 100-loss team. Mm. It's a player that's taking, like, he's, he's just paying attention to detail. Yeah. I talk about it so much with my high school team. Everybody wants to talk about launch angle, all these mm. other things. That's paying attention to detail. Keep the tag on. And that goes, Maybe, go ahead. That goes, that goes unnoticed, too. It's like, oh. Yeah, we won five to four, but do you remember the play back in the second and what's-his-name yeah. made? Going the extra base, applying the tag on the guy and holding it on him and see his foot pop up, umpire, bang, your foot came up. Nobody talks about that, and that's a huge, those are huge plays in games. They were in every game this whole series. I know they got swept, the Pirates, but they were in every game, and that could have been one run here c- considering what the outcome would have been. Yeah, and, and they go, but you go over that kind of stuff. You yeah. go over mm-hmm. that kind of stuff in – in pre, pre-series yeah. scatter reports. Of course. Like we, I remember we used to play Rajay Davis. Mm-hmm. Rajay Davis would steal 30, 40 bags a season. Yep. Minor leagues, big leagues, half-time, part-time, whatever it was, he was stealing. But they said he will slide past the bag every single yep. time. His okay. momentum. So if you're over here like this on your phone in the corner during the, <laughs> during the yeah. scouting meetings, no. But if you're like middle infield, you know, oh. mental note. Rajay, boom, through the bag, I just keep it on him. Yep. Yeah. And even if he beats you there, find a way to catch, 
keep it on them, ride them. They call it riding them all the way out. So you ride them the way out, and then away you go from there. That happened yeah. with the Royals, too. That, that was one of my proudest moments as a reporter on the road for the playoffs. I don't remember. It was, it was probably Dyson, where there was a scouting report, same thing, and we were talking to Hardy and, and to Scope, and they were saying the same thing because they were running wild those, those few years. Yeah. Were you on one of those? Both of them. Both of them. 14 oh. 15. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Kratz, he's, hey, he's always in the mix, baby. <laughs> he's always in the mix. <laughs> uh, who, do, you, do you recall that? Was, was, there's a that Rod, would, sometimes that get a little Rod would slide through? Bag. I don't remember Rod sliding through mm. as much. I mean, if I were to guess, it would have been you had a, Aoki and, and Rod. Yeah. But like, but like G-Baby, Terrence Gore, he mm-hmm. would slide G-Baby. He would slide just right into the bag and super hard. Yeah. They got him on in Houston the year we won the World Series. They got him. He would slide in and his foot would come up, oh, up off the bag. So Houston right held yeah. held the tag on him. That was his first time he got ever got caught stealing. He was safe, but he hits the bag and his foot comes up. Mm-hmm. So any of those guys, any of those like speed dudes. We also talk about it in catching because in catching, they're like, you know, the, the guys that are burners and you're like, oh, great. My guy's a 1-5 on the mound. He's <laughs> gone. Some catchers, they'll just eat it. 100% of the throws that you don't throw, you got no chance of getting them. Yeah. Just throw. We would talk about it. Just play catch. He'd catch it. Yes, you're not going to get him, but there's a chance. Mm-hmm. That's there's good a chance. scouting. It I is. Like that and it's the Little teams thing. that care Little thing. that make that make the difference. The teams mm-hmm. that are going to make it to the NLCS, the ALCS, the World Series. They have those scouts that take advantage of that stuff, and the team needs to implement it. And the last thing, you're not going to win 20, 30 games in this. It might be one or two, but guess what? At the end of the year, when they're like, shoot, I'm down a game and a half. You know, we got two left. Well, those two games come, come in pretty big. The Tyrus is excited. Tyrus is excited. Yeah. We, just, we just lost the <laughs> I love it. He's ready to go, baby. Go. We got to get it later. Sticky. You need every game, though, especially no doubt. in Pittsburgh. Tampa no Bay is cruise control, but if you're yes, Pittsburgh, it, is. Uh, it, it was a pump the break series for them, too. For sure. I will say. They needed, like, was, they needed to check. lose those? So I that you, so like that you sound think, right? I think the world's calming down a little bit. So everyone's like, Mercury's the coming back. Listen, about to make the, the playoffs? They were like, in no. every game, though. It wasn't like no, no, Broad City, right. which is good for They're playing listen, competitive they're ball. They're playing competitive. I agree. They, they are definitely significantly yeah. better than I thought they would be. With you that agree. being said, they're not making the playoffs. There you go. We need to have a show True. where we talk about who is making the playoffs. Mm. Why? You think I'm knocking too many teams? You're knocking <laughs> a lot of teams. <laughs> There's I a little bit, there's a right little bit of Josh Haterade right now from you. Oh, we got to have. In the National League, I can fill it up for you easy. Easy. I'm, I'm still good. Now, do I want to make some switches for my yeah, own Yeah, don't let the cat out of the bag yes. yet. Don't yeah. let the cat out no, of the No, but National League Central, okay, if the Cardinals are terrible and, and we're not buying that, first of all, they're going to bounce back. They're not going to be this bad. Now, you think they're going to be this bad? No, no, no. No, I just, think, I just think they're bad. No, they're bad right now. And so if I have to reshape it, I've got Milwaukee then coming out of that division right now. And then yeah. everything else, I'm good. I got the Braves in the East, got the Pods in the West. I got the Dodgers getting in. I got mm-hmm. the Mets and the Phillies. Boom. There's your playoff teams. Good. As, as easy in the American League? Um, I had the Rays. I'm still good on the Yanks. You had the Rays in division or just in? Just in. Yeah. Who did I win the, pick to win the division? Jays. Who? The Jays. Let's spend a second on the Jays while we're there. Swept in four games by Boston. Oof. Boston's won six in a row. This is the same case for me as Pittsburgh. Not as bad as we think they're going to be, in my mind, but still not a playoff team. For me, Boston. I think their offense is strong. And Yoshida is proving a lot of doubters wrong no right now. Because no he was getting a lot of hate in the offseason based on the contract. And some people were like, uh, some of the front office members, because you'd see those th- those uh, writers put out articles like other front office people said they weren't even going to give him half that. You know, it's like, I was going to give him 40, not 80 or whatever. <laughs> you know? And then look at him proving everybody, uh, hey, I'm a walk machine. I've got pop to all fields. He's a little dude, but he can swing the damn bat. And, I mean, he's got six homers now. He homered again yesterday, and they thumped the Blue Jays. For a whole series. Ooh. Four. Yeah, I think it said more about the Blue Jays to me than the Red Sox. Fair. But, but same they put thing. The, Pump the brakes for me for both sides for Toronto and and for Boston. Great, though. great stories though. Great stories leading up. We'll see. 
it'll change every week. Yeah. You know how it goes. Then we'll be like, you know what? Blue Jays are actually a real team. And it'll, you know, that, that's what it's all, yeah, that's what a full season's all about. And then at the end of the year, we're like, you know what? We, we knocked this team a lot. We didn't, you know what? Sorry. Or whatever it is, you know? We, we are who they thought we, they were. The old <laughs> saying. We're going to eat some words <laughs> at some point. Yeah. Everybody does. I don't freak out, Everybody though. That's, that's also part of it, is I don't freak out on, on highs and lows for teams generally. Because you'll get an, an, a, a team or two that are going to outperform high and low. Sure. But most of the time, especially the last like 10 seasons that I've really locked in on this, the teams you expect to be good, it balances out for them. No doubt. And that's what he said the other day. Kratzy was like, chill on the Yanks. Okay? They're going to be okay. I'm the same with the Mets right now. You got they looked disgusting terrible. against the Tigers. They looked yeah. terrible. But that's not the Mets. I don't think they're gonna be that bad. Verlander's gonna bounce back. Scherzer's gonna bounce back. It's not just the Alonzo Lindor show. You've got Nimmo. Their, their offense I don't think is great. I think it's good, but their their starting pitching should be strong. Those guys Scherzer just came back. Verlander just came back. That, that leads us into our back. next thing. I mean, they, they batted. JV. Yeah, I mean, he gave up two about, homers yeah, early I mean, there, listen, but then he was okay. I mean, he gave okay. up more contact. But it, no, he I want to talk much. about the hitters. 141 the whole series. I mean, that that's tough. And when you see when you see how bad you you can play, that was probably the worst I've seen them play in a long time. You know, they've hit their bad spurts, but that was that was tough to watch. I watched a couple of the games at home, man, just hanging out. And I'm like, wow, you know, kind of look dead, arguing a little bit more. I get it when you're struggling, you're, you're trying to find your place again. But, you know, you, you got to find a way. That's a team you got to beat. You got to win the series against at least. No, Split, I mean. At least. I mean, they, they ran it. They, they've run into some weather. If I'm going to be a, if I'm going to be a. A met in a met. What is it called? Enthusiast. Enthusiast. Yeah. Not yeah. Apologist. apologist. Thank you. Excuse you're, you're me. Gonna, you're gonna if I'm going to be a met, or? if I'm going to be a met apologist, and you're losing to a bad team, the weather was brutal. They went they went three days without playing in New York. Then they went to Detroit. Another day off. Then they went doubleheader game game, and they came out and they looked like they forgot their bats. Yeah. They forgot their bats and. The thing that was concerning to me in the last game, and some people can say, okay, he was trying to push the envelope. They're losing 2 nothing, and you get thrown yeah. out at second on a stolen base? Nemo? Yeah, your run yeah, means Rodriguez nothing. Won, yeah, Rodriguez won eight innings. Like, yeah, you're talking about Nemo. They were, that was yeah. a big thing in, in New York. They, they were kind of pissed about it. You they got, should you be. Got, you got Polar Bear coming up, too. He didn't even get in the bat. He, yeah. Polar Bear, he can drive me in. Hell yeah, from, I'm, from I'm here. right here. Right here. <laughs> Just, just trying to do too much, right? You're, and he's you're and trying Nim, to make Nimmo's, something happen. Nimmo's been struggling yeah. these last couple series. From some watching the games, he's swinging at first pitches now. All of a sudden, I mean, I'm not saying not to swing at him, but he's swinging first pitch, trying to get four hits out of one swing. You know what I mean? And I've been there, I, and you've been there. We all been there. That's when you maybe take a pitch or two. Scotty Rowland told me the best. He, he took a pitch on one two like this. Auto take. I said, Scott, what are you doing? He goes, I'm struggling anyway, man. Screw it. I might as well try and get my timing right. I'm like, oh my God. With two strikes. I was like, this is phenomenal. You know, some crazy thing to do, but you gotta yeah. ease up. Nimmo's gonna be fine, but yeah. he hasn't struggled like this in a long time. You Nimmo, know? Nimmo yeah. has a crazy stat. Three two, his swing percentage is like no incredibly low. He, he just doesn't swing. auto takes. And yeah. the swings he takes, yeah. three two. Like, yeah, yeah, a little Joey Votto. Way. But but if you look statistically at it, it's like 54% of pitches, 3-2, are out of the zone. So if you never swing 3-2, <laughs> you will walk over half the time. I could do that. Scott, I, I wish. You're box. definitely getting With those biceps, you're getting a breaking ball. You look at some, two, I'm like, swing, 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 swing. If some, if some dude comes up and he's got a black bat, you're like, he's swinging. Yeah, no doubt. If somebody comes up with biceps like that, you're like, uh, yeah, splitter <laughs> change. Yeah. You don't throw a splitter? No. Try one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, no, but Nimmo is just as much table setter for this team. Totally. I think he as goes, they go. I, I agree. And you know as, you're, saying, as you he see it, yeah. it's not like when when Vada would get criticized because he mm. would take so many pitches. Yeah. And you're like, dude, you need to drive in runs. You're the guy, and you can hit 40 bombs. Yeah. Nimmo is just as important, just setting the table for these guys. For sure, no doubt. And and people forget that no matter how much money you put into your team, you still got to do that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Right now, the Yankees are in that spot because they lost junkie ball game and judge. 
G is out for, for a little bit yet, and Judgey's out for who knows how long. They have to, no matter what your payroll is, nobody's putting your payroll on home plate. They're going up there, and you have to compete. Nimmo has to get on base. Volpe has to get on base. He's yeah. got to be able to drive runs in, steal his bit. Like, you got to play the game. No matter what your – the payroll pays for where you should be at the end of the season. Yeah. And the players play every single day. And DJ Mayhew cannot step up and be like, all right, junky ball game's out. Slide me into his role. I got 35 pumps yeah. for you. No. no. You got to play your games. And the Mets are yeah. going through that right now. Hitting yeah. 140? I'm not asking for Pete Alonso to be like – Okay, I'm going to choke up now, yeah. and I'm going to make sure I get on base for these guys. No. You guys still keep driving the ball. Everybody's got to do their part. And I don't fault Nimmo for getting thrown out there. I'm just saying that at the end of a series, when you get swept by mm. the maybe 100-loss Tigers, it was, it's yeah. a bad look. Two nothing. Two nothing. Your, it does. your run doesn't – it means something, but it really doesn't. You just need, no. you just need to go base to base. And if you it, can get an extra one, go ahead, because that guy coming around you needs a score. That's about it. It's it's basic it's basic baseball that yeah. when you're losing sometimes you forget that yeah. but also when you're losing and you do basic things wrong you're like that it's looks even worse blown up there were a lot yeah. of sweeps actually the last few days I'm thinking about there it was now. the Mets were swept the Jays were swept the Brewers were swept in Colorado they're like get us the hell out of Denver <laughs> which teams usually don't say in the past ten years the so thirty eight was it thirty eight series. That the Rockies hadn't swept somebody at home? No freaking way. Some may, they maybe I've heard their that records wrong. much. I mean, you might be right. Their records much better at home most years. Remember, they go on the road, and all of a sudden, like the adjustment for them is is bad. They usually play okay ball at home. But you could be right. I don't know. I haven't seen that. Well, a question from the crowd. Luke said, "Are the Red Sox good, or is Jay's pitching mid?" Hmm. I, I would say potentially <laughs> both. I know. I, that's a really good Mid? question. The Red Sox are I would hot. say. I would say, no, for me, I don't think the Red Sox are good as a ball club. I think their offense is good. Because Devers isn't even totally clicking yet. I, I, Tristan Verdugo Cassis is batting 120. Cassis isn't hitting much. Devers, not doing a ton. Devers isn't doing a ton. Yoshida looks great, obviously. Verdugo. Verdugo's been great. Phenomenal. Oh, uh, Durant. Has been Jared. for them. Oh, he was on I the Olympic trials. You, this kid's you know an absolute, I, absolute stud. And he can run, too, like, yeah. like Billy Hamilton speed run. He can run like Billy Hamilton, yeah. but his dad's a weightlifter, yeah, yeah, and me. he's a weightlifter, and this guy runs what I call runs heavy or runs hard. Yeah. Like, you hear him coming. I really like this guy. He has just – he has a swag about him. When I worked for the Red Sox, was in 21, and he was kind of like a – he was like an up and down kind of guy. They weren't really sure. He got to the big leagues, kind of struck out, and he's got a he's got a big personality. Yes, he it, is banging balls to left center right now. He's got I, I got to look it up how many doubles he has. He's an absolute doubles machine. Yep, and with his speed, that's one hit to score him. Exactly. You know, you got big poppy banging balls off the wall. Mm -hmm. That's maybe two hits to score him. This guy, he runs the bases well. He is energy. He's got – he's – I really like him. How he's going to – his strikeouts have to have to go down. I don't know if his strikeouts are down this year. But they they bang the ball. And, I, you know, Yoshida, I feel like, was an easy AL Rookie of the Year pick mm -hmm. just because, you know, I didn't see Josh Jung – Coming yeah, out of John, Texas, yes. hitting, hitting he's a stallion upper tanks there, and oppo upper he's tanks. A, he's yeah. a stallion. He had a great first month. But Yoshida, same thing Like same thing when we talk about like the Yankees. Yoshida, as an older player, he's been through a full season. So yeah. I really still like my pick there. But up and down that lineup, I think they're going to have some trouble with lefties. I think some lefties are going to get them. I think not having – Bogarts in there is amazing that they're still hitting like they are. Yeah. And not having Bogarts, like, what the crap. But <laughs> Casas, I don't know. He controls his own so well. He can if somebody's gonna learn, it's that guy. Mm -hmm. That guy wants to be really good. As much as he's kind of, you know, he's kind of a different bird, he wants to be good. Seeing him and Duran, the way they go about their work when I was, you know, trolling around the minor leagues there, mm -hmm. it's it's impressive. The Red Sox have some guys. You said before when we were opening packs or trying to open packs, Marcelo, 
Marcelo Meyer? Yeah. No, he's a he's I, a dude. I like him. Yeah. But on the short term, in my mind, they're not a playoff team. No. And it has too to do tough with the of a division. Yeah, too tough of a division. I just I don't think the pitching is there. I think it's okay, but Sale's not who he used to be. Kluber is definitely not who he used to be. He's, mm-hmm. he's not even around the zone sometimes, like he used to be. And I don't know if that's control or if that's, hey, my stuff's not the same, so I'm going to nibble a little bit more. Bayo hasn't been a, a stud for them yet. So Young. Even if some of these guys hit a little bit better, you know, towards the season, um, as the season progresses, I just I look at their pitching staff right now on paper. Talk to me. I just so, don't see it. So real quick, if you put the Red Sox, the Pirates – and the Cardinals in a lottery ball, mm-hmm. and you pick out which one do you want to be like? Oh, this is they're gonna out of these three teams, they're gonna end up the best from where they're at today. They're gonna have the best record in the division they're in. In because I think if you put the Red Sox in the Central NL Central, <laughs> they might they might run they away might with win it. it. Yeah, and because sure. that's what we thought the, the Cardinals Central's were gonna bad. be. Yeah, but anyway. You put all those three in there, and you're like, come on, I want the – Definitely on the short term, because this is just for this season. Just right? for this year. Definitely not. not the Pirates. I'm sorry. Not yet. Not there yet for me. They're for the, me, they're I'm, the... I'm going Cardinals still. I am. You want the Cardinals ball to, to come out. You think they're going to end up better the than season? the Red Sox? Yes. Because Cardinals. the Red Sox are in the East? Because the Red Sox are in the East. <laughs> after they just I don't swept like four pitching. from the Jays? I think we get excited Ooh. after the first month. Okay. And – Depth starts to play out. For it's the rest Cinco of the de Mayo year. right now. Yeah, it's one month. We're into the month. We're into the month. It's for me. It's the Cardinals still. You? I'm still. I like the Red Sox, man. I, I don't know what it is right now. We talk about this all the time, though. Like they're hot right now. Like are they going to steamboat a couple series and next thing you know, just pfft. I don't know. Because we always talked in the beginning. They're, they didn't. Everybody said it. They're not going to have a shot. But the way they're clicking, hitting wise. Pitching, no, that's what I'm worried about. I mean, I think that's most teams. It's either pitching. I, I think their pitching is going to be tough. But yeah. if they're putting up runs like this and Tristan Castus actually starts hitting a little more and Verdugo just keeps rolling with what he's doing, especially at the top of that lineup, I mean, you don't know. I mean, the Yankees are hurting right now. They don't have their guy. And, if, you know, if they don't get healthy in the next month, month or two, I mean, you never know what that can have. The Rays are taking off. Well, they're that, that's, taking off. They, 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 they're gone. They're in the moon right now. Yep. Are they, they gonna jump start? Are, are they gonna come back down to earth? I don't. Well, I don't. Comes a little down. I mean, yeah, I mean, down yeah, to earth. I mean yeah. listen. I'm happy. Yeah. They went 13 and 0, and then 13 and six. Who wouldn't take 13 and six? Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh they're struggling. 13 and six. No, over the last 19. No. no, they're they're, no. they're on cruise control right now. And so. every night it's like, who hit a homer? Mm-hmm. You're like, who? Howard Ramirez is got six. The, yeah. the like, surprising part for them has been the pop yeah. from from just about everyone in the yeah. lineup. Yeah, but why? Why? The guys that they have have had pop in their career. Yeah. They, the guys that hit have hit, the, you know, as far as like a hit tool. Yandy guys, Diaz getting the ball in the air a little bit more this year. Yandy. You know? I played with Yandy an entire AAA season, and he had a ridiculous launch, average launch angle of something like – It's unbelievable. It was something like 1.3. And I watched this guy. He had a – on base percentage over 400. He's just, he never swings at the pitch inside. And they traded for him, went, or maybe it was claimed. I forget how he got there. And we played against him in 19. And when I was with the Giants, and then I got traded to the Rays and partway through that season. And first time we saw him, they were like, yeah, pound him inside, pound him inside. First pitch inside, whack, homer to left field in San Fran. And I was like, I have never – like, I just got to the Giants. I go, yeah. I played with him a year and a half ago. He never once hit a ball, even in BP, to left field in the air. <laughs> in BP, he would hit homers to center. Yep. In the games, it was all let it get deep and just scud missiles. I saw a team – I saw Louisville, yep. Louisville Bats, Louisville. ran a left-handed hitter shift on him to defend him because they were so sick. Um, Marquise Gris. Marquise Grissom yeah. was was he was the manager, right? Yeah, well, I, in AAA. I think so, yeah. He yells out, he goes, I am sick of seeing him hit the ball to the right side. Go over there. Shortstop was on the right side. The second baseman was deep in the left hand where the they left were? where they would play. Yandi goes, ground ball to the middle, face at RBI. That is impressive. <laughs> That's That's awesome. impressive. He's, he's a batter, but he's lofting it now. 
he uh, he got paid, and I think that also gave him a comfort zone to try things that have been suggested to him. Is what I've heard. You know what I'm saying? Hey, let's let's try to figure out a way to tap into this power a little more he's, muscles. He's very. Oh, you know what, what I'm a, saying? What a bicep! And it's like now, <laughs> now you're taken care of. Okay, yeah. let me try something else. Love it. That didn't necessarily get me here. That could put me in a bad spot, but also could put me in a 35 homer territory. And mm -hmm. he's Oof. there right now. So that's charge the mountain. Good stuff. Shop at tyrusbaseball.com where you'll find high quality Tyrus maple bats, pine tar grip sticks, rosin bags, and other accessories. The pros know Tyrus, do you? And it's all on the set as well. Let's get ready to bring in our first guest of the day here on FT Live from The Athletic, does a great job writing about the Phillies every damn day. Matt Gelb joining us right now. Matt, great to see you. How are you doing today, man? What's up, guys? Bryce Harper is uh, playing in South Philly tonight, so I think a lot of Phillies fans are pretty excited. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a big deal down there. No so, doubt. Um, how surprised were you on a scale of 1 to 10 that when you looked down and you were like, it's the beginning of May, Bryce is already back? Uh, it depends on, like, when you're asking. I guess, like, in March, I would have been, it would have been a 10. Uh, two or three weeks ago, it would have been probably a five because it became clear that, you know, he had this in his mind, he had this goal, and the Phillies were going to let him pursue it as long as his body responded well and his body kept responding well. They essentially brought spring training to Bryce. I mean, they got minor league pitchers to come to Citizens Bank Park. They even came on the road with the Phillies to throw uh, live at bats to Bryce. Um, he didn't do any rehab games. He's back. And of course, he goes 0 for 4 with three Ks in his first game and then reaches base five times in the second game after he's like, well, my timing is, is just a little off. Well, he reaches base five times, which, by the way, he only did that twice all of last season. So uh, it took him one game to get his timing back. Hey, Matt, uh, Todd Frazier, hope you're doing well, as I see. Um, question for you. So they played the Dodgers and um, they got swept. OK, everybody's making a big to do. I read your article here about the concerns, um, to Rob Thompson came out and said it's basically a team effort. You can't, you got to limit the runs, got to make the plays in this. And you write about pitching wise. Um, what is, if you had to say, what's your biggest concern right now with the Phillies? It's got to be the rotation, Todd. I mean, they, they uh, haven't gotten pitchers to go deep in games. They've had stretches where the rotation was better, uh, you know, but it just, it hasn't been consistent enough. And you can probably say it's about just about any team. I heard you guys talking just a minute ago. I mean, Pitching into sport right now, I think, is in is in a rough spot uh, because of the injuries, because of the rule changes. I think uh, pitching is is feeling the strain of that. And, you know, Phillies pitchers are relatively healthy. They're going to get Ranger Suarez back uh, most likely next week. He's going to make one more rehab start at AAA. But they just need better. I mean, Taiwan Walker, they signed him for $70, $72 million. And um, he just it hasn't been good. A lot of walks, a lot of home runs. Uh, Aaron Nola's velocity is down. He's kind of doing, uh, you know, pitching with less and he's had some success, but, you know, he had a five, nothing lead, you know, in that game, the final game at Dodger stadium, by the time he left the game, it was five to four. And I mean, when you get a five nothing lead and you're a top of the rotation pitcher, I mean, I think it just needs to be a little cleaner. Like you know, Matt Strom has been awesome for them. He signed him as a middle reliever. He started six games for them, but he's already thrown more, more than half the innings he threw last year. So I think they're a little worried about him and they want to get him back into that bullpen role. So they're going to make some changes here, um, but really they, they need these guys to pitch deeper into games. So let me ask you this. You also said in the article, there's some up and coming guys coming up. Do you think anybody right now at the top of your head is ready to come up and maybe help this team and be us another starter? I mean, Suarez is definitely the guy. Suarez is going to make one more start Sunday at AAA. And they really, I think they've seen how much they miss him, right? I mean, you know, solid lefty in the middle of the rotation, uh, had the elbow concern in spring training, but they, they've really, really missed Ranger Suarez because they could usually count on him to go six innings every fifth day. Um, they, they need that badly. And then the guy that they're all looking forward to sometime this summer is Andrew Painter, who's uh, their 20-year-old top prospect. He's He's been progressing in a throwing program. He's still a ways away, but like I think they're looking at him as a guy who's going to contribute you know, later this season. So that's a guy they're excited about. And they actually just added Jeff Hoffman. I don't know, Todd, you might have played with him yeah. uh, you know, he's 30 now. He's throwing 99 miles an hour as a reliever. Um, they just uh, – he had an out clause in his minor league deal. Uh, they, they added him today to the roster. And so they're, they're making a few changes around the edges to see if they can get something better. Right now, they're, they're last in the NL in ERA, which is kind of crazy. 
what you guys don't know about Matt is last year we talked quite a bit. See, he's starting to smile now. <laughs> he has – we've had a lot of great baseball discussions, specifically Phillies baseball discussions. And he's about like – you know, he's about like my betting segment of the show. He's like 5 and 15 on his suggestions. And he'd come to me. When he would get his five right, he'd be like, see, I told, I told you he was going to – I told you he wasn't going to be there. And I'm like, okay, well then – Matt, you're my guy. So you're my guy here. Is Kyle Schwarber going to be hitting leadoff? Because this is what's happening in Philly, Philly radio. I get it all the way from my house to over here in Jersey and Todd's house. <laughs> and if they're not talking about the Eagles draft and how great Howie Roseman is, they're talking about why the heck is Kyle Schwarber still hitting in the leadoff? Is he going to be hitting in the leadoff spot in two and a half weeks? Probably not, although he's only been doing it for one game now. And I know Phillies fans are like really upset about it. I mean, they're looking for one thing to kind of get upset about. And honestly, I think it should be the pitching right now, but they're upset about uh, Kyle Schwarber hitting leadoff. And, I, you know, I get it. I mean, I think Schwarber is not your typical leadoff hitter. I mean, he, he um, but you know what? You get to June and you get June Schwarber and you want him hitting as many times as you can in the game. And like, you know, he is a traditionally slow starter, and he has started relatively slow this year. He's got seven home runs. All seven of them are sole homers because he's been batting near the top of the lineup. And, you know, I, I, I like lineup construction is a big deal, but I think as I've come to learn, and it's it's more important is like getting guys to feel comfortable in those spots. And Kyle Schwarber likes to bat leadoff. Like, I mean, he had this conversation with Rob Thompson, and he feels most comfortable up there. He feels like he has a better approach and is more successful when he's near the top. So, they had him up there now. Um, I think Bryson Stott's going to end up back there. Um, I get why they're doing it now. And, you know, maybe once we get to June, um, people will have something else to complain about. Maybe. Well, if the starting pitching stays where it's at, yes, they'll have the same thing to be complaining about. <laughs> but you mentioned Bryson Stott. Is part of that decision, have you talked with Rob Thompson, because Bryson Stott can't hit a fastball, and if you are – he can't do damage on a fastball. He can hit breaking balls and foul the fastballs off. Is part of that decision to not lead him off because Trey Turner's behind him, so he's going to get a lot of fastballs. Is part of that decision, you know, go into Rob Thompson's decision? I think Stott has been – he's been – he's made some really good adjustments, Kratzy, on fastballs this year. He's, he's – I, I can't remember seeing a guy with a two-strike approach right now like, like him. I think he's got six more two-strike hits than any other hitter in baseball right now, which is um, unheard of for a guy that young, right? I mean, he, he hasn't even had one full season in the bigs yet. So uh, I, I think part of it is to take a little bit of pressure off Stott. I think they saw Stott expanding the zone a little too much of late. And Stott's even talked about it. Like he, he's, a, he's a guy who prides himself on being patient and disciplined hitter and working long counts. And he's probably swung it a few too many pitches out of the zone to his liking so far. So I think they take a little pressure off him here, move him down, um, see if Schwarber can get comfortable in the leadoff spot. You know, Schwarber was definitely banged up to start the year. And I keep asking people around the Phillies about it. I keep asking Kyle about it and saying, Hey, you know, like what's going on? Or like, do you want to talk about it? And he has not wanted to talk about it to his credit, I guess. Um, but I think he is feeling a little better now than he did even a week or two weeks ago. So we'll see if that leads to some better results. I want to get back to Bryce Harper real quick and uh, the arm guard gate, we're going to call it right now. So, uh, <laughs> you know, there was a big problem. If, if fans don't know, you know, umpires wouldn't give him extra time to put the arm guard on. Do uh, you think they should make an exception or something like that for him? I, I don't know, Todd. I mean, like, I understand the league stance. They're like, well, once we make an exception for one guy and one obviously very high profile guy, you know, we're going to have to start making exceptions for everyone. And I, I, I get that. I also think there should be like an element of common sense here, right? You know, I mean, like if he needs a few extra seconds to get that arm brace on, like just give him a few extra seconds. You know, like it's crazy. I mean, like he's going to get a huge ovation tonight, right, at Citizens Bank Park. And, and, and like they don't want to have Cody Bellinger's situation. So the Phillies had to reach out to the league and say, look, hey, this is, you know, can we get approval, you know, for, for Bryce to step out, acknowledge the crowd, and not get – called an auto strike and yeah the league's going to give him the approval but like i don't know do we need that like don't we can we have umpires you know they know the game they're following the game just like we are they know the players they know the situations can't we just cat let the umpires use a little common sense here and in the situation like with the arm guard or with the crowd like i don't know i just feel like they're 
is this pretty simple solution here and it's common sense. And so is common sense tell you that Nick Castellanos is going to be an all-star this year? <laughs> uh, I don't know. These I'll are the kind of this, conversations like, me and Matt used to have in the dugout before uh, my 12 games that I worked on the radio. <laughs> I'll say this. I mean, to, to, to Castellanos' credit, I mean, he is uh, – he's focused. He's more relaxed. He's more comfortable than he was last year. And he kept talking about all these things in the spring. And to his credit – you know, he's followed through with it, you know, in the first five weeks of the season here. I mean, we see a guy who has is more patient and is more disciplined at the plate than I think he's ever been. I mean, it got lost in the shuffle because the Phillies lost that game Wednesday afternoon in L.A. He had one of the better at-bats of the season right before Bryson stopped, tied the game. Uh, he drew a walk after falling down 0-2, and, and he had swung at two really bad pitches out of the zone and then showed the discipline to to get it, you know, to get it back to a full count and then draw the walk and ends up getting Harper to second, and he scores on a base hit. Castellanos has been really good. I mean, he's now hitting for a little more power in the last 10 days. Um, his right field has been a little better, uh, you know, absent a uh, ball, a single that he played into a triple uh, on Wednesday afternoon. But it's just been better, and, and he feels like he needs to step up with Reese Hoskins down for the season, and um, Castellanos has been great. I don't know if he's going to be an all-star, but um, he's, he's really been solid. He really has. Matt, I'm going to get the fans in the YouTube chat involved here. So Sports King, Kingdom goes, Phil should trade Brandon Marsh and some prospects while he's hot for a solid first baseman or a pitcher. I don't view Marsh's ceiling to be so high past this season or even now. You should have seen Kratzy's face just now. So I was excited <laughs> to read it. Hey, let, let's talk through it. We get excited about players and then they could come back down to earth or he could be incredible. So Matt's watching him every day. What do you think? I mean, yeah, he's definitely due for some regression. Like, he's not going to have a 1,000 OPS, I don't think, the entire season. But, I mean, think about it. Center field has been a total black hole for the Phillies for a pretty extended period here now. And I think I look at Brandon Marsh, and I see a guy who can hold down this position pretty well. You know, like, I don't think he's going to be a star player, but uh, he's made some real adjustments that you can point to and say, oh, this just isn't like a flash in the pan. This is a guy who has made some conscious adjustments to his swing and his approach. Um, he plays a solid center field. He really does. Uh, he's, you know, the beard makes him look older, but like he's only 24 years old. Right. So, I mean, you know, like he's, he's got a lot ahead of him here. Like, I don't think he's a guy that I'm trading right now. I mean, they traded one of their better prospects to get him Logan Ohapi, who is now out for the season prior to the angels. But, you know, they did that because they, Ohapi was blocked by JT Real Muto. And they're like, well, we need to get another young player who can play every day for us at a position that we need. And Brandon Marsh was the fit in center field. And, uh, you know, look, it's not going to be – he's not going to hit what he's hitting right now for the whole season. But I think this guy is a, is a really solid everyday player, and he could be for a long time. Hey, do you think uh, Bryce Harper ends up playing the field here shortly? Um, you know, get the fans even more fired up? I think it's going to be a little while, Todd. I mean, the, the one thing that they don't want to rush in this recovery process is the throwing program, right? You know, they felt like they could push him hitting – um, you know, he hit with a torn ligament all of last year uh, because he's a right-handed thrower and a left-handed hitter. There was less conceivably less strain on the right elbow while he's swinging. And he's also wearing that brace he wore last year at the plate that prevents him from sort of hyperextending that elbow when he swings. The throwing program, though, I mean, that's something you just you can't rush that. I mean, like that's literally he has a new elbow. It's reconstructed. And that over the top motion with the elbow, the throwing motion is what puts the most strain on it. And so. You know, he's going to keep doing his drills at first base before games. And I, I do think first base is realistic for him. Now, whether it's sometime in July, sometime in August, like I think that's kind of like what they're looking at right now. It's going to be a while, right? I mean, he beat every timeline to get back as a hitter. Um, and so even if he gets back as a position player in the field, you know, at eight months after surgery, say, you know, it's still incredible. So I think you're looking at a period of months here where he's probably the DH at least two months, maybe. Uh, and then we'll see where, what happens then. He's, he is throwing, though. I mean, he has started his throwing program. and he's um, I think he's at like 60 feet, maybe, um, you know, throwing like every other day. So he's getting there. Citizens Bank's really small, so he doesn't need to throw it that far. He could get out sooner. <laughs> you know, he's just he picks it up from the wall and just 90 feet. He's ready to go. So hey, I Matt Gelb said it here I first. Saw you he's going to be back out you... in the field super fast. Well, fast. <laughs> saw... Thanks, Matt. So it. small that I saw you hit a bunch of home runs there. I mean, that was <laughs> yeah, that's there my guy. See, uh, I'm telling you, this is give it back to you. There it is. Hey, what? 
when he does come back, whether it's this year or not in the outfield, what is that, what is that outlook looking like for the Phillies? Is it, is it a Bryce Harper to first base? Has Alec Bohm done enough? Has Edmundo Sousa done enough? Sosa done enough at third base? You know, what, what do you see as the outlook of that? Or what are you hearing as the outlook of it? Yes, yeah, so and that's the interesting thing, Eric, is that Bryce doing first base right now, I think he's thinking ahead, right? And, and it's not just about the season. It's not maybe even about next season. It's like he knows that he's probably going to end up at first base at some point in his career. Like, I think everyone kind of knew that going in. And look, there's still like like seven or eight years left on his contract, right? So the DH spot will always be there for him if he needs it. But I think he's athletic enough to handle first base. So I think he looks at it and says, okay, I have this downtime right now. You know, let me try to learn this position with Bobby Dickerson, one of the best infield coaches in the game. Let me focus my energy and my attention on it. And that just gives us options. It gives us options maybe later this year. It gives us options for 2024. And Reese Hoskins is coming off the ACL. He's going to be a free agent. You know, you have Castellanos and right. You have Shorter and left. You know, maybe you want Shorter to become a full-time DH next year because, you know, he is not definitely not moving around like he used to. And then maybe that means that Bryce Harper is playing first base for you next year. And Alec Bohm is staying at third. I don't know. It just gives them different options. If Bryce feels like he can play first base, you know, maybe Reese Hoskins comes back and he's splitting time at first base in DH with Bryce Harper. I don't know. I mean, it gives them a lot of different options if Bryce can play there first beyond 2023. And I think that's why he's been thinking about this. You've mentioned Schwarber being a little bit banged up. Are we, is there some type of maybe WBC thing? Any, I know you said he didn't tell you, but is there any kind of, like, is there something that he did in WBC that you saw? I, I, I didn't see anything. I, I know that they were concerned because he, he barely played, right? He was mostly DHing, and it wasn't a typical spring training for him. He didn't get nearly as many reps in the outfield that he normally would. And I wonder maybe if he tweaked something, and just because he wasn't really in, like, the best conditioning and not of his own fault. I mean, really it was because um, he did, he did not really play a lot for, for team USA and WBC. And I don't even think he played the field. I think he was DH the whole time. So um, I think it was more, they felt like they need to, to, you know, to ease him into this. And if you look in April, I mean, he barely played the outfield. Like I think he had like something like seven starts uh, in left field and 16 starts as a DH. So uh, they, they were easing him in and you can watch, I mean, like he wasn't moving around great and like I see some things, you know, behind the scenes, like he was definitely getting some treatment and um, you know, he's kind of, he's, you know, he's pushed it off them. I mean, he's like, you said, it's everything's fine. I'm good. I'm good. Phillies have kept saying he's fine. He's fine. He's fine. Um, he's starting to play more left field obviously this week because Bryce is back and there's no more DH spot for, for Schwarber to, you know, get, get his leg, you know, get off his legs. So uh He's 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 playing, so I think that means that he's good enough. Matt, last one from me on Trey Turner. Number one, uh, Jackson in our chat said struggling. Just wanted to know what you're seeing from him so far. And obviously, it's early. I mean, the OPS plus is 90, so it's a little bit uh, below average. Not getting on base a ton. Not blowing up the world with power. Then my second part of the question is, he said the other day in LA, oh, maybe he would have signed with them, but they didn't really. Um, getting discussions with him, the Dodgers. Now, okay, I see that part, but I'm also like, <coughs> bullshit. Like the Padres <laughs> offered him more money than the Phillies, and he was going to the Northeast. So it's cute and nice for him to say that. But did you buy that? I didn't necessarily buy it. Although I will say, like I was, I mean, he was. Uh, he seemed to really like it out there, and like watching him reconnect with some people from the Dodgers side and some fans and some just like even some like security guards. Like he very clearly like had a bond with people in LA. Um, it seemed to like it there, but yeah, you're right, Scott. I mean, like he, he turned out an offer from the Padres that was pretty good, way better than the Phillies offer. And he, he wanted to be on the East coast. I think that was pretty clear. So, um, not totally buying it, but a nice thought. And as far as him at the plate, I don't know. I mean, like he's, he'll, he'll be the first one to tell you. I mean, he's just like, he's made some really bad swing decisions. Like he's swinging a lot of pitches out of the zone. You know, I think, look, it's natural for a guy, um, who's on a big contract now and to want to, you know, try to do a lot of things, especially with Bryce Harper out that first month. I think Trey, you know, might have felt like he, he was, you know, had to be the guy. And, um, you know, Reese Hoskins goes down, all that stuff. You're the new guy and you want to prove that, you know, you're, you're, you, you, you know, you, you're worth that contract. And um, he's got a whole season to prove that. He's got 10, however many years of contract, has 11 years to prove that. Um, I think he's going to be just fine. Uh, I do think that Bryce coming back helps Trey Turner a lot. I mean, number one. Bryce is now batting behind Trey Turner, number two. It just, like, takes a little bit of pressure off everybody, right? With Bryce Harper back, uh, I, I think that 
Trey Turner is probably best when he doesn't have to be the guy. I think that's one of the reasons why he signed here in Philly is because there are a lot of guys and he doesn't have to be the one. Now, at the very beginning, when you said this, off the top, you said the issue with the Phillies is pitching. But three quarters of this time, <laughs> you've been talking about hitting. So why are we not talking more about the pitching? And is it the same thing that they kind of went through in you know, the last days of Joe Girardi with their pitching? I know that was more bullpen type of issues, but how's it, where, where's this fix going to happen? And don't tell me Ranger Suarez because you already said that. I mean, the fix happening, Eric, is, is Aaron Nola and Zach Wheeler need to pitch better. Like, they need to be co-aces at the top of that rotation. And we've seen flashes from both of them. You know, Nola had great eight solid innings against the Astros, and Wheeler um, has started to put things together. But it's been really odd because both Nola and Wheeler and Taiwan Walker included, uh, they've all been victims of, like, one really bad or big inning, like, almost every start. And honestly, as a casual, you know, I watch, I try to watch other games, too. Like, I see this a lot. I mean, I think the clock, the pitch clock does really have an effect there is that, like, if you let things kind of spiral a little bit, it can get really, really bad, really fast. And I think that's been an adjustment, especially for Nolan and Wheeler, who are two guys who have been in this game for a while, have never, you know, been subjected to the timer. And I think Nola, especially, um, he's a guy who likes to really take his time. And I think this has been an adjustment for him. And not, it's not an excuse, but I mean, really, the game changed quite significantly overnight. And I think some guys have adjusted better than others. And Nola, I think, is still working on it. So it, it just needs to be cleaner. I mean, like, what's the fix? I mean, the fix is like, I mean, there's no one, you know, Suarez, other than him, I mean, there's really no one else that's going to come up right now and help this rotation. They need it to be, they need to clean it up. They need to throw more strikes. I mean, I think they've gotten to be, try to be too cute, you know, in some instances. And, um, you know, Throw strikes. I mean, that's that's kind of the name of the game right now. And I know, you know, there's more. You know, it's easier to get a hit now without the shift when you put a ball in play. But still, I mean, you got to trust your fielders. You know, you got to trust that if you make a good pitch, um, you'll get an out on it. Is there a chance Mick Mick comes up from the minor leagues Mick at Abel. all? Mick Abel from from the beginning from by the end of the season, possibly. I think I think there's a chance by the end of the season. Sure. Yeah, I mean, he's at double A. He kind of had a, he had a rocky first start, but he's been a little better since. Uh, he's coming off a good one. I think he's pitching tonight, actually, for Reading. Yep. Uh, yeah, I mean, definitely a chance. You know, I mean, he's he's right there. Uh, I think they, they don't want to rush him. They, they need, he, you know, they still think he needs some development time. But uh, if there becomes a need and he pitches well at double A, uh, certainly. I think uh, just about anything's on the table there. He's 21, Painter's 20. Just turned 20. Just turned he was 20. 19 in camp. Hey, high schoolers, if you're really good, you've got a shot at being called up by the Phils. That's aggressive. Some teams – By a team that has over $300 million in salary. Like before, like you call – people would say, oh, you come up through the Yankees. Oh, they spend on all – teams want to win. Phillies want to win. If you're ready, they are not afraid. Atlanta. Ownership, Dembrowski. Atlanta does that. Mm-hmm. They land does it all the time yeah. for like 20 years. Yeah. Well, it's, it's smart. Hey, don't waste the bullets down in the minors. If you feel like he's ready, worst case, you send him back down. So, Matt, awesome talking to you. Have fun this weekend with uh, Bryce Mania. See you guys. Thanks for having me. Thank you. <laughs> See you, Matty. You, you can read all of Matt Gelb's good stuff in The Athletic, truly. I mean, if you talk to his colleagues, I'm not just saying this, and I, I like to say it when – when he's off, so I can I can really gush. Like he's this is still one of he's still, he, on he's right still now, listening yeah. to you. He's listening. <laughs> All good. He can hear. Senior writer for the Athletic and at Matt Gelb G E L B. You want to give him a follow on Twitter as well. So we've Senior. got Ross Stripling coming in about a minute. But no, that's true. I, I respect teams that call up players regardless of the situation. I think the thing I'll applause the league and the players for from the last CBA is let's make more incentives. So teams don't do the bullshit where they keep guys down. That's working for position players. I've always felt that way with pitchers though. I know you've got to develop, but if you, if you don't want to waste bullets, you know, no, it's, and it's about <laughs> the brass saying, you know, well, we got to wait a certain time to bring them up. So, we don't have to pay him this or an extra year on arbitration or whatever it is. It's that's ridiculous. Super when you two, break that that's down. super two baloney that that goes on. So, um, bring the guy up if he yeah. deserves it, man. I've been through it, you know, not to reminisce or be upset about things. I, you know, I got called up. They're like, yeah, you're getting called up. You tore it up in spring train. Then they brought in a new pitcher the day before the season said, oh, we're actually putting him back down. I was pissed. I'm like, I thought I deserved to be up there, you know, and it happens. That's the business part that sucks. But yes, if you got a pitcher that's ready to go, especially a young guy, get him out there. Let it, let it, let him just 
go. And if he struggles, he struggles. That's why. That's how you learn too, as well. There's nowhere else to put him if he's crushing it in AAA. What else you got to do? They, they manipulate pitchers. Mm-hmm. They used to manipulate their service time just as much as position. It's just way less noticeable because they're like, ah, uh, you know, we have off days at the beginning of the season. Yes. We only um, need four starters. Yeah, yeah. We're carrying extra. Oh, ha, hey, Grayson Rodriguez is ready to come up to the big leagues. What did he do the last mm-hmm. two and a half starts in the minor leagues? Nothing. You're manipulating his service time. Yes. Like it's it's a and you came up and still won the rookie of the year that year. Yeah, exactly. So like that would be an extra million in his pocket. Now all of a sudden, if you do that, you get extra million in his pocket. Does do the teams get a draft pick too? Is there mm-hmm. a compensation on that end? But if there if there's not, it's fine. For the rookie of the year? For if you call somebody up. And they win Rookie of the Year. I thought there was – or maybe that sure. was in the CBA. Well, I won, were... I won the Players Rookie of the Year. I didn't win the – The real one? The real one when the writers – I, I, yeah, the real one I won. When the players voted. The players vote. The, wait, player, wait, the right. players vote. The real one. Who won that year? Uh, Harper did. Harper. Oh, yeah. that's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah he got Let, it from, check, from all the writers. Let's check a stat. Let's check the stats. Scott, <laughs> I, I want to. I'm actually excited yeah. to check that. Listen, out. Tap, tap all on good. It. All good. I'm not mad about it at all. Trust me. It's all good. No, 11. that was eleven. Twenty eleven. Okay. Yeah, I did. I did good, man. I was I was proud of myself. When you get it from the players, though, especially not to go on a ramp or different subject, that means more to me, honestly. It's a rant, not a ramp. A ramp is where you. I thought I said. Going I ramp. thought I said rant. <laughs> <laughs> I called it Mundo Sasa or whatever I said. I don't know what I said. Yes. I'm furiously looking up. Todd Frazier, 2011. Here we go. I, I, this is not what I want. Right, so you know. I, I want it because it uh, needs hey, to be why? said. I mean, it's a fun combo. Bryce would probably love to talk about it. Too, honestly, you know? it's I don't, just an award at the end of the day. I mean, I know it's a big deal. But I, I'm came, I think I came in trophy. third because um, who was the lefty pitcher from the Diamondbacks at the time? Oh, he's, he's, been, he's been with the Orioles. Who is he with now? Oh, that's going to bother me right All now. Right. Not Miley. You're talking yes, about Miley. Miley. He, oh, yeah, he, he came in second place. See, sometimes I, Wade, I yes. forget. You weren't yes. over this yesterday. Wade. Wade came in second. Yeah. We gave Wade some So I didn't – the last oh, the last month, month and a half, I didn't play much. And I, but, I recall Dusty didn't play me that much. Um, I don't remember why or what happened. This and is that, 2012, that, by the way. It's not 2011. Are you sure? Yeah, because Bryce – Oh, you're, you're right. You're right. 2012. I came up in 2011. Yes. You, I didn't get the most – so there's a prerequisite. You need a certain amount of bats. I didn't reach that. And then I got another chance. So. Right. You had. I couldn't tell you my number. 19 home runs. That, so 19 homers, 67 RBIs. And this is 2012. 2012, 118 OPS plus. Harper was 118 OPS plus. <laughs> more plate appearances. Yeah, he definitely had more plate appearances. 22 homers, 59 ribbies, 270. Well, I had more so. RBIs. He that's good, more, though. He had more stolen bases. Oh, then see, that's what got – You know, you know I knew there was, had, there was something. He had Sports Illustrated cover, too. Oh, of course. <laughs> that, that was, that was well, something. I had the Little League World Series. But I guess yeah, true. You were... <laughs> Let's bring in our guy. Let's bring him in. Ross Stripling. Let me, chicken strip. Hey, Ross, right let me right talk now. to you about that. Would you have voted for me, dog, back in the day? <laughs> knowing my Little League World Series presence or what? <laughs> I love the classic baseball thing you just did. Oh, I don't know my numbers, like 19 home runs. <laughs> yeah, 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 19 home runs. Exactly. Yeah. So true. <laughs> I, yeah, I played it off a little bit, just a little yeah. bit, man. Yeah. What was my ERA that year? Like a 295? I don't. I don't remember. <laughs> 295. <laughs> yeah. I love you know your numbers. I like, love it. like if they're like, oh, what was your best season? Can you rattle it off? For sure. Uh, I can get close. Yeah, for sure. Um, just like Frazier did. Yeah, I could. Uh, I, I could definitely do it. But uh, <laughs> no. you're gonna act. You're gonna act humble in the moment for sure. <laughs> hey Russ, oh, how God. you feeling? Now I know that's a very common question sometimes from reporters. <laughs> I don't like that question, but I like it in this case because seriously, from a health perspective, how you feeling? Because I know some on the ball club are not scoring runs on the <laughs> field. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm one of the uh, 25% that escaped it. You know, Logan Webb threw out a uh, 75% of us have the uh, S words. I don't know if this is a, a profanity show or not. Yeah, no, you act, absolutely can say the shit. Okay, yeah, yeah, this, yeah the shit. show's yeah, got se- it all. 75% of our team has the shit. Yeah, that's one of the best <laughs> post game interview quotes I've heard. Uh, I'm in the I'm in the one quarter that's surviving somehow. You know, wow. uh, Mex- Mexico was an experience. We can certainly talk about it, but um, he's not wrong. Every it's basically run through almost everybody. Do we know th- Do we know what it came from? Or did you guys get a bad salad? Was it some tequila? 
<laughs> what, you what know is... what the the rumor is, and I don't know, is that someone from the Padres came to Mexico with it and then passed wow. it through their locker room into our locker room and now. But I, I don't know, man. I mean, you hear about don't drink the water in Mexico and all that kind of stuff. It could be a combo of a million things that happened to us down there. But, you know, really, we've all been in a locker room. Once one guy gets it, everyone's getting it. And this uh, is exactly what happened. Do we know who this individual <laughs> is? No idea who patient zero is, yeah. <laughs> zero. Good call, good call. But seriously, on the team side of things, though, you're human beings. I think it's important to point this out, just like anyone else who goes to another country, comes back with an illness, whatever it is, goes through a stomach issue just in general. What's that like for a ball club to weather through right now? Like, are certain people avoiding each other? And obviously, yeah, like, if you can't keep stuff down and you feel terrible, you might not perform as well. Yeah, I mean, that's a fact. No one likes playing sick, uh, especially something like that. You know, it, it's one thing to just have, like, cold and flu symptoms, a little bit of a headache, a sore throat, like that stuff you can grind through. But like when you're uh, running back and forth to the bathroom or or have like body aches and, and, you know, like a true stomach bug, that's hard to battle through, whether you're pitching or playing the field or, or whatever it is. So uh, to answer your question, we're not avoiding each other. Uh, that's impossible to do. We all tried it in COVID. Uh, you're used to that, but you know, that's not what we're doing at all. We, I think also we're just assuming we all had it. <laughs> We've all, uh, it's all gone through us one way or the other. So, um, you know, for the most part, we're, we're hanging in there. I, and I think the worst is behind us. Honestly, it was like the last day in Mexico into that first day in Houston. There might be a couple guys that are still trickling in with it as sad as that sounds. Um, but for the most part, uh, the whole staff and players are basically through it. Speaking of runny stools, how's the whole baby? How's the whole baby life going? Are you, you know, you're now a month and a few days into the season. How's that? How's that? Uh, just how's everything going for yeah. everybody? For mama? For you? For baby? You know what? New uh, new place here. We're out in the East Bay. We got a front yard and a backyard, so our two year old loves it. We can just throw him out there and have him kill energy. Uh, that's been a huge help. And then our youngest is eight weeks old. His name's Brody. He's still not giving us longer than like three hour stretches. So we're in the trenches at night, uh, getting up and feeding and, and surviving the nighttime uh, feeds. But, you know, he's great, man. Everyone's in good spirits. And then as far as on the field, my wife's a trooper, you know, a day or two leading up to my starts or an outing where I know I'm going to pitch. I get a little extra sleep. I'm a prima donna in that way, for sure. As we all know, we if you can't sleep, you can uh, perform on the field, man. I think that's a fact. So. You know, she lets me get my rest when needed. And other than that, I'm on duty. She's like, well, you're not pitching for four more days. You got the 4 a.m. feeding. Like, all right, sounds good. So um, we're hanging in there. It's a lot, as you guys know, but uh, everyone's doing good. That is something that I got to commend her for that because, <laughs> like, that's something people really don't know a lot about. Like, the wives part of our journey as baseball players is huge. And, uh, and a lot of the times, the wives that you see out there are wives that are putting themselves out there for their own betterment and the wives like your wife, like my wife that, you know, they're going through the grind and they're going through it silently. So big shout out and a lot of clapping for, for her, because that is, that's something that I thank my wife and still thank my wife for the opportunity to play. So your wife going through that no night's sleep and then to go two days on, yeah, you deserve to be on, you know, you only have a bullpen today, Ross. You got yeah. Brody. Yeah, you're spot on, man. I mean, I think about, for instance, Jock Peterson's got three young kids. His wife, Kelsey, will bring uh, their, uh, he's got like a, a little over a two-year-old named Wilder. And she'll like bring the whole crew to the field and watch a game just so Wilder can run on the field for 30 minutes after the game. You know, and ju just for that memory, just for that uh you know, having that with Jock and and uh, what she had to go through just to get to that game and survive the game and get that kid on the field after the game. And and now we're experiencing with our two year old Jackson to get him. We, we were just in Houston to get him on the field after the game. And she had to, like, come and watch nine innings. And, and you know, so I'm with you, man. Yeah. Claps all the way around. They're they're troopers that um, are behind the scenes that no one really talks about enough at all. Let's take you back down to Mexico. For non talk, because I know you said, hey, if we want to talk about that, I do. just want to know, what was it like? What was the best experience you had down there? I mean, it looked like a party. Food did look good. Um, crowd vibes looked WBC-ish. So give us the goods from that trip. Yeah, so that's that's the best part for sure. I mean, the, the crowd was awesome. Uh, every interaction we had with a fan, 
or with anyone from Mexico was great. It really was. And the food was good. Where we stayed felt safe. Guys were walking around having a good time. Um, you know, as far as as uh, the, the baseball brand of, of the sport that you saw there, kind of wacky. Uh, a little bit like 40 runs scored in the first game. Uh, we had over-unders <laughs> in the 20s. <laughs> um, you know, I think, uh, that, I think that was a record of major league baseball, both those games, uh, everyone got a Homer basically. Uh, you know what, man, the experience was fun. I, I do think some things will have adjusted. It's a four year contract. So to the six teams that come over the next three years, um, you know, we definitely have given some input to MLB about things that can be better and, and just, uh, you know, player safety, player health. We lost Yaz and Crawford while we were there to injuries. Um, you know, it's a lot. You're playing at 7,500 feet. Uh, we didn't have an off day after. Both teams went straight somewhere and played a, a whole nother series the next day. Uh, so that kind of stuff, you know, wears on you. We all already talked about the the sicknesses that we've got. But as far as the experience, man, I, I think we can all say we enjoyed it. We we uh, are glad we were the first two teams down there to play in Mexico City. I think that'll be an experience that we all talk about for the rest of our playing careers and even afterwards. Um, you know, so... Things can be adjusted for sure, but overall, just like playing in front of those fans that were obviously very excited to see Major League Baseball, baseball played at its highest level, uh, was obviously, um, you know, a really cool thing to be a part of that I think we'll all remember. What kind of input? What kind of input did you guys give them? What's <laughs> something that they can that they can switch up just so we can make sure we call them out? Because it's kind of like yeah. what we do here. If you guys have something, we want to make sure somebody actually implements it. Well, let's fix the humidor if you're going to make us play at 7,500 feet. Uh, that, that, that mostly came from the pitcher's side of things. Um, you know, the, the plane surface was, um, I guess, adequate. If you guys saw, you know, I'd, I'd already spoke about injuries, but, um, you know, they're like 12 hoppers getting through the infield. Like, we're already dealing as – this is pitchers totally complaining here, but we're already dealing with altitude. <laughs> Tatis hits a ball 94 at a 46 – and it pimps it because it gets out of, of right field when uh, something in San Francisco, you're probably running in to catch that ball. Um, but also the 12 hoppers are burning through the infield. Um, you know, and it's just stuff like that. Um, it did take, you know, we stayed almost an hour, hour and a half away to, to get to the field, which once again, just complaining to complain here, but it would be nice if there was an area that was 15, 20 minutes away from the field where it didn't take a police escort and an hour and a half to get to and from the stadium every day. Um, I don't know. I don't want to go down the rails too much here. We, we enjoyed the process. It's just if you're talking about, you know, three more years of games being played there, we want to make it the best we can for the players uh, moving forward. For sure, because, I mean, they're bringing money in. You want players to feel good. Did you have to go and check your ERA to make sure you didn't give up any home runs? That's how many we're calling out there. <laughs> Yeah, we uh, we penciled that one in as well. Like, hey, the wins and losses can count, but why don't we uh, why don't we throw out the players' stats for those? <laughs> no, need those homers. <laughs> yeah. Juan Soto needs that home that homer yeah. that he hit for sure. <laughs> yeah. Listen, I think the exciting part is those twelve hoppers getting through as a hitter. I think that's really exciting. <laughs> yeah, you got the wrong crowd. I'm with you. I, I understand. Yeah. I, I don't. I don't know why that was. That's exciting. That's really exciting. But hey, question about going to Mexico. Did you guys get paid too as well going to that series? Like a little extra, you get a little stipend or something like that? We did, yeah. You get a bonus, um, nice. you know, added to this this week's uh, or this two-week pay stub. And then uh, the cool thing too, we get a $50,000 pool that we get to split among staff as well. Technically, staff was yes. not going to get a bonus or any add to their salary at all. So we did get $50,000 that we can spread around to, uh, you know, the guys that take care of us uh, behind the scenes. So that was a big deal as well. That's awesome. Yeah, that is awesome. And by the way, I was looking up because I know we had him on yesterday, Chris Bassett from the Blue Jays. He was watching that and he had a tweet yeah. that got a lot of play. He goes, playing baseball in Mexico City should come with a clause that pitcher stats <laughs> don't count. It's like, <laughs> it's, it's, like not, it's, it's all pitchers. It's like extra yeah, it's all pitchers. It, it, well, that's yeah, the main extra. thing, guys. Like, it, 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 you know, we played in Colorado. You see guys playing Colorado. Now let's go one and a half times higher than that. And it's just what it does to our stuff. Like, we get it. You hit a homer. Like, that's everyone's argument is like, yo, that's a homer everywhere. Well, yeah, I just threw you a slider that normally breaks 15 inches that broke six inches. And it was sitting on a tee for you and you destroyed it. You know, that's the biggest thing is like our stuff just doesn't play at all at that altitude. And we're literally just might as well just be flipping it in their rookie of the year style, letting you guys just <laughs> hammer it. Because that's 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 the biggest thing. It's like, yeah, whatever the ball flies. But if if my stuff is going to be half as good, it's it, it's like a UFC fighter walking into like a plus 5,000 bout. I mean, he's going to get his, his ass kicked. There's just no way around it. And uh, 
So you just go out there and, and do the best you can. But uh, yeah, man, it, when, when your curveball's not moving, your sinker's cutting and your cutter's sinking, it just, uh, it's just, it's not pretty. You, you know what they should do in Mexico? To give you some of this Tyrus rosin out there, you can, <laughs> you can glob that on your hands, your, wherever you want to put it, and it shouldn't, shouldn't matter. You get a little extra spin in there. Hey, pop fly homers are great too. I just want to put, point that out <laughs> too as well. I mean, I don't know why people pitchers. I mean, it is what it is. You know, if you got the power to hit a pop fly homer, I, I would praise that guy too as well. Pop yeah, that, that's that should be the caveat. Bring uh, if you're gonna play in Mexico, you get spider tag. There you go. Hey, bring, hey, bring it back. Ooh, yeah. I like that. I like that. I, I like that. It. That would love it. That would definitely get some extra viewers. Yes. <laughs> hey. I don't think we got to talk about this and wanted to get your take now that Scherzer's back. What have guys been saying about that situation? Because, you know, the news cycle just hits and then it dies. But we didn't actually solve anything. And I've talked to many pitchers both on this show and, and off. And they're like, yeah, we don't really know. So we just hope like, oh, and Phil Cuzzy's there. We got to be a little more careful, which to me is a weird part of the human element. So just for purposes of of pitchers knowing what they should be and should not be doing what do you think um should be done and what are people saying good question man we could soak up some time talking about that you know um you brought up phil cuzzy for sure i think he's popped all three guys that have been popped um so you're certainly aware when he's around um you know and and i guess what we say about the most is like man if you're going after max scherzer you better know what you're doing because he's not going to let that fall to the wayside uh, I was the CBA guy for the Blue Jays. He was on the uh, committee, and I I watched him go after some owners in some of those calls. So you know he's going to go after some umpires. Um, as far as what we're saying, um, you know, their checks are are pretty solid, like pretty thorough. If you're going to have something on your hand, um, my guess is they're going to find it. Now, whether, you you know, we saw the thing with uh, German in, in New York where it's like, dude, I told you to wash your hand and comes back out with it out. And they're like, dude, I told you to wash your hand and doesn't get punished versus Scherzer gets banged right off the bat um you know so you brought up the human element there's still like this whole idea of like are they really gonna bust me uh, can i use maybe a little bit of sunscreen i don't think anyone's really breaking out the pelican grip and the spider tech i know i just made that joke i do think that that <laughs> stuff is is out of the game but um you know if you're talking like sunscreen and some of these spots where it's really dry or uh, really cold and and um guys maybe starting to use that again i'm not sure i haven't seen it on my on my team but sure they just got banged um We'll see, man. I don't, I don't necessarily have a good answer. But as far as what guys are saying is like, if you're going to do it, it's a big deal, man. We lose a roster spot for 10 games. And uh, as, a, as a San Francisco Giant, the way we use our bullpen, that's a big deal. So, um, you know, you better be pretty careful if you're going to start mixing that stuff in again. So do you feel like you're kind of on edge? Like, you know, some people – we had Max on, and two days later, he yeah. got run. So – do you feel like you're kind of like, oh, crap, that guy was putting suntan lotion on, spraying it next to me. Like, am I going to get popped? Because if you are, like, that's not right, right? Where guys are sitting here going, and and there's no, but then there's also no recourse. Like, you have no opportunity to be like, look, I want to stand up for myself. Oh, okay, well, here, we're going to talk to people who just punished you, and that's the only recourse. Like, how, because you were on the board, how can we fix this? Good question, man. We went from 100 to zero, right? We went from like everybody coming up from AAA with the most bastard slider you've ever seen, just going like this on their glove, just getting it and like, oh, yeah, this is going to be nasty and just like ripping a slider, <laughs> um, you know, and, and so MOB needed to make an adjustment. That's what we did. But they went 100 to zero. They went from you can't have anything. And they tried to give us some rosin. It's better. It's not great. Um, you know, I think what we've asked it, or have brought up is like, why not be something like rosin, but on the mound that we can touch, you can either use or not use that maybe is a mixture of sunscreen and rosin or, or some concoction that we, you know, agree to as, as a MLB slash players. But then that opens up a whole can of worms, right? Because then I can get my hands sticky. And then how do you know that I'm not using spider tech when I can just say, Oh no, that's how sunscreen and rosin works for me. So it's all this stuff that we've talked about now since they banged it um, to get to your question. It's my teammate's career. If he's going to use it, he's going to use it. I will say, like, look, man, just be careful or, or have have a way to wipe it off if you need to. But um, like I said, I haven't seen it. But if that were to be happening right next to me, I'd be like, man, it's too big of a deal to lose you for 10 days. Um, so just, you know, be extra cautious. Yeah. You, 
Yeah, I think the biggest argument was that they used too much or that you that pitchers yeah. used too much, right? So it's like mm-hmm. you take a guy, goes wash it off, do this. But if you use a certain, you use, what was it, alcohol, it makes it worse. Uh, sweat makes it worse. So where is – where it's a disconnect. So I, you have to use – I mean, as a pitcher, can you go out there without anything on your hands and throw strikes? Yeah, oh, yeah, that's that's what – you know, 99.9% of us are doing now, I think, is, is yeah. you know, sweat and rosin. Go watch my teammate Alex Cobb pitch. Hit is hilarious. I mean, he'll throw a pitch, and he's taking off his hat, and he's, like, doing this kind of stuff. He's just trying to get, like, any sweat he can to put onto the baseball, and he's just frustrated all the time, you know. Um, but, like, that's what guys are having to do to get a feel for the baseball. Um, you know, so we'll see. So, to like, to turn it on to you guys, you guys are hitters. Um, what's the argument when you guys get a bat and you go spray just a – massive amount of that stuff and you put in pine tar and on your batting gloves you know that makes it so you can swing the bat as physically hard as you can and know you're not going to let go of the bat know you're going to you know be able to swing it through the strike zone as fast and as hard as you can because you have a good grip on the ball i mean sorry on the bat kind of the same thing right but not you know like where do you guys stand on that just flipping the script on you no 100 percent. I, I agree with you on that i i need what we would use was a tennis wrap tape we put around the bat. Um, you know, you, that I don't know exactly kind of grip, but lizard skin. Lizard skin. We've lizard used, skin. I've used that before. You know, sometimes I like it. Might be too thick sometimes, but yeah, it's a great argument. I I need I need the stick. I know I need it. <laughs> but, and it's just a feel like it when you swing because I I I'm notorious for letting the bat go out of my hands when I played. And hitting you know, homers. And hitting yeah, homers. And hitting homers. Yeah. <laughs> that still pops up on my feed. Like I, I got it today. I, I got it time, today, right? man. And that's a prime example. Like, maybe I used too much that day. It was too hot. Like, I agree. You guys need something. They have to come up with something that you can use. Whether they, they fix the ball. I talked about in Japan when I played in the Olympics. The ball had a soft lather on it. It was so comfortable to feel. You don't need anything to put on it. There's got to be something they could do for, for pitchers. And I, I agree. I, would, I want you guys to have something on your hands. Especially when you're pitching, throwing, you know, 95. These guys throwing 95 plus out here, and it's just, it's, you know, there's got to be a fair way of doing it for sure. I agree. So I think that was ended up being part of the argument was like, man, if you take this away from us, there's going to be neck balls left and right, guys getting mm-hmm. hit in the head and all this stuff. And I don't think that's really happened. I think that was uh, part of our, you know, once again, we're just total pitchers over here. Just <laughs> sure. Don't, don't, sure. don't take it away from us. Uh, we're going to hit guys in the head, and I, I don't think that's happened at all. So player safety was part of it early on. And part of the narrative, but I, um, you know, I really don't think that's come to fruition at all. I don't, I don't, I, I maybe hit by batters are up a little bit, but I don't see uh, it being a, you know, way big of a problem as we were saying right off the bat. Ross, I got one non baseball question. I looked it up. It said you were born in Bluebell, Pennsylvania. Is that, yeah. is that like, do you have family there? Did you grow up there? That's no. like 30 minutes from me, or were you just born there and then you were like, I'm out. <laughs> yeah, literally, Hershey man. Park. I'm, no, I'm, I'm the only stripling to ever be born outside of Texas. Uh, my dad took a job up there for just a minute, and that happened to be where I was born. Apparently, lived there for like 15 months of my life, and then right back to Texas, uh, where I was raised. So I, I it's a funny story. Last year, I was playing the Rangers in their new awesome ballpark. They had this wall of this like born and raised in Texas thing, where like these guys that come visit and play in their new Ranger Stadium get this little plaque. It's like this really cool thing. I posted on my Twitter, and they wouldn't add me to the wall because I was born in Pennsylvania. <laughs> And I was, I fought these guys tooth and nail for three days. I was like, add me to that damn wall. Like I am, I, I, I am as Texas as it comes. Uh, you got like, I hunt, I fish, add me to the damn wall. And they're like, no, you weren't born in Texas. And as I was leaving on the last day, getaway day, um, they were like, Hey, come here. And they'd like put me on the wall. And it was, it was a big moment for me. I need it. Cause I, I claim Texas through and through. So when, when someone, when the, like a big tr- uh, jumbo trying to put like hometown bluebell, Pennsylvania, Kind of irks me. Sorry that that's where you're from, but it just—it it, it it irks drives me, me too. I agree. Yeah. I wouldn't want—I wouldn't want to be born. Oh, wait, what? Sorry, Eric. Wait a minute. I was about—I <laughs> mean, the whole time I was sitting here like, man, I feel for you. I get it. You're Texas Quaker. Through, through. Like, I was just going to open my arms up and say Pennsylvania <laughs> cares about you, yeah. Ross Strip. But now I'm just like, no. Nah, He's a Quaker. Beat it, nerd. Yeah. He's a Quaker at heart. Man. Pitchers, pitchers, and people that live in Texas. Yeah. Yeah. I thought you were Pennsylvanian. I could even hear it in your accent. You were like, "Hey, yeah. you guys." You were dreaming. Yeah, you were dreaming. Yeah, you were yeah. Dreaming. yeah. Sorry, man. I gotta, I gotta stay Texan. Apologize. Love it. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good story. Hey, Ross, this was awesome. As usual, good luck the next few weeks, and then uh, we'll talk to you then. All right. 
All right, sounds good. Fraze, hang in there on the stock market, man. You didn't ask me this time. Yes, I was. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's illegal. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was, you know, I wrote it in. I said I was going to ask another, but we went on this Pennsylvania thing. I'm like, I'm like, you know, I'll get him next time. But we're, yeah, we're, next time. Hey, we're hanging. I, I, I've been reading Is up there on my thing. Going on? No, not yet. Not okay, yet. okay. It, I, I don't want to cross any boundaries. He's got a, he's yeah, got a season. Yeah. He's got a season. Yeah, to go. he's busy. You know, last guy we had on here, we got popped the next start. So be careful. Out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's no. Different. But yeah, yeah we'll let's be not talking keep that tradition else. going. Yeah, but yes, <laughs> I, I've been watching. They're saying there could be some booming coming up here pretty soon. Okay, so we'll see. <laughs> you you don't have to say a word. I'm just <laughs> looking yeah. in your eyes. I'm looking right in your eyes. I got it. Yeah. He's suddenly right, he's not watching games anymore. He's just watching uh, what MSNBC <laughs> and, yes, uh, all that. and all that. <laughs> Thanks for coming on, brother. All right, thanks guys. Appreciate it. Appreciate it, appreciate the strip. Oh, good stuff. Yeah. Hey, Todd Father. Is always looking for a good tip. Yes, in, in all <laughs> things. My guy, my guy wants cards. My guy wants. <laughs> oh. He wants locks for yeah, lock for his it. nerfies. He wants. Well, he I'm, wants I'm looking market. online for my nine U tournament. I'm trying to check the records there. I, I got to figure out who I'm pitching. I'm all over them. They're, they're lefty heavy. <laughs> my buddy, my buddy. I was talking to him on the way here, and his son plays high school baseball. We're about to play their team next week. You better watch. You know what? That's the point. Is <laughs> hopefully we do. Yeah. Is he goes, his son got on first base and the team they're playing, <laughs> the kid pulls out a spray chart card <laughs> for the next oh, hitter. The first God, baseman man, that, has no, a spray chart card for the next batter in their lineup. I didn't want to hear what you're saying. My buddy, my buddy goes, he goes, <laughs> my son looked at it and he goes, what is that? Oh, man. A spray chart card no. for high school kids. I'm done. How did they know? I, but the, the spray chart done they even if they do them. know i know I, it's ridiculous as it is but i'm saying do they actually have data they 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 either somebody either manipulated the data somebody scoured the internet for it like if you want my team spray charts i will give them to you i don't have any <laughs> i'll tell you these guys absolutely rake and for a high school team to have a spray chart that they're pulling out yeah. and going, well, he's only got <laughs> the top, the top number of at bats on my, my team, the team I coach is 56. Yeah, no, no, no chance. You're getting a spray chart on 56 at bats. <laughs> I, I knew you loved that. <laughs> with nine U spray chart. We're going to get that for you. Okay. So I'm actually behind the eight ball. I need to, I need to get better. Yeah, it's but that's a scouting report. Hey, that's get a better. scouting report. Maybe in high school baseball. But maybe maybe they saw like three dudes on your team that just only pull everything, no. and they're like, "Let's let's move over." That's where you see during the game the guy fouls then one tell off. Them, <laughs> then tell them, then tell them, "Hey, Johnny, yes. yes." Not some kid like. No, I'm saying in high school I was known for taking charges. That was my thing at one point on Love the that. on the squad. Love that. <laughs> Ref, Come on. So this like guy, there was go. one game I think I think it was Rutgers prep actually three. Three what charges high school did you take. go to? I went to watch on Hills. Okay. I take three in a game. Oof. Next game, I line up to do my usual. Because there was there's some dudes that oh, would yeah. just truck stick forward. And yeah. I'm like, you you tighten up. And Don't I'm like, know. I'm taking the hit, baby. <laughs> Protect I, the jewels. And I'm like, I'm not going to – I wouldn't fall in real life, but I'm picking that ball right now. Charges are so, they're ridiculous. But I, I embraced it. That oh, was my great. thing. Next game, I take the first one, and it's a charge. Yeah. And they don't call it. And it's I think it was an M1. And I go to the ref, and he's block. like, he basically said, we got the book on you. Oh. He's like, I heard you're taking charges left and right. I'm like, oh, that's where like, flopping started. Yeah, that's where flopping but I wasn't started. flopping. He's yeah. more of a Euro There would be Euro a guy player. who would just put his head down and truck stick down the lane. And so we're like, okay, we know this guy's doing Scotty the same Flippy damn move. Scotty Flippy they called him. <laughs> that's they did. But yeah, Flop City, and I got Flop. busted. So that's what I'm saying. I'm wow. like, the refs have a scouting report on Listen, me? The I'm ref. like, you freaking nothing. High school player. I read yeah. about you in the Wickasaka <laughs> Inquirer. Yo, no, you had Hills. three. You, we're not getting Watch a Kittle Hills. We're not getting uh, any. Three on them, guys? No. We go get dude. you. That's that dude. You're going to have a lot of these. Well, you that know what? Dude. You know what I call that? I call that a ref show. So now let's get to the up show, okay? Oh, That's what man. he said. That Jesus. is a perfect tee up. What a transition. Okay? Let's, let's go to Ooh. our boy right now, Adrian Johnson and Trisha Whitaker. Does a great job covering the Rays, friend of the show. Threw this yes. tweet up there to just help us kind of paint the picture of what Zach Eflin, who shoved yesterday, had to go through. So he said the umpires made him take off his rubber wedding ring. He said it's something that means a lot to him. He doesn't like to not wear it. Umps told him 
he would be ejected if he didn't take it off. He mm. took it off, put it in his pocket. He said the ump said they, he would let them inspect the ring every, every single time he came out. Didn't work. Quote from Eflin, they seemed on edge today. That is called an ump show. Uh, uh, guys wear those rubber wedding rings. Those are the good ones. He's there, got there one it on is. Up. Wait, so no, take it off. You're not allowed to talk anymore. I'm take sorry. it off. And wait, apparently <laughs> I'll let you look at it the whole time. No. And is that not glove? No, hand? no, you gotta go. Is Come on, glove hand? man. It's glove. Yeah. It's always. It's always glove yeah. hand. It's by fever lefty, of course. Right, right. I'm saying. But okay. He's, so it's, it's glove hidden. hand. There's probably a few hundred of them that are on in the league every day. A ton. So one guy just got singled out because Adrian Johnson's having a bad day. He, I don't know. I don't know if Adrian Johnson called him out, but he's the crew chief and he stepped in and he was the one. I mean, you saw, you saw, you see the video and you see Eflin going like, you know, he's pulling it because it just, it pulls and it moves. Kalo, yeah. Q-A-L-O, they do an incredible job of making these rings. Tons of guys in the league wear them. Tons of guys. Where um, to the point where when they sent me mine, yeah, I haven't worn my other wedding ring, and I got my wife two of them. Yep, she wears them. Like it's just if yeah. uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna cut you off because <sighs> we got a problem here. Roll the film. <laughs> Listen, here we go. We're back. So my man, Zach Geflin, has his ring on. It's a rubber ring. Go ahead and inspect all you want. It's hidden, for one. For two, the guy loves his wife, man. This is something that he enjoys. Like he thinks about during the game when he's struggling. Uh, maybe he likes to feel his ring. Like, all right, I got my family. It always has my back. And I'm a big family guy, as you know. And as you know, there's something near and dear to my heart. Adrian, let the guy live, man. We know what happened the day before. You had some problems with Shelton. Then this happens. Come on, man. Don't let your frustrations boil over. As an umpire, you let things go. Let it work on it. Like, what's the problem here? Me and you need to sit down a little bit and have a little chat, man. This guy works his butt off. Now he's got to worry about not only pitch clock, not only, you know, pitching well and his team not doing – or his team struggling a little bit. He's got to worry about his ring. Come on, dude. Guys, what are we, what are we doing here? Need, need. Need to be better than that. Mm. I don't know what – I don't know – I don't know what made made Eflin say they seemed on edge today. Like, was it what happened the night before? Was it the fact that maybe Shelton had a, like, legitimate beef and mm. they just felt like the teams were attacking them? Manny's zone last night was quite large, so yep. maybe both teams are chirping. Like – like it happens, and, and this is why you don't have more, more than like a three or four game series with one crew because you can't. it gets it gets testy. But the place where I don't think big leaguers necessarily always do a great job is where the umpires need to step in and not bring stuff from game to game. They don't forget. That's the thing. Just they, like they, us. they have to. Same with us. We but they have to. Yeah, we you, have to. You can't do that, though. They especially. That's not your, your job is to be the same, to be invisible. We don't want to be here talking about you. No. And if we are, that's no. a problem. That's why when I hear human, oh, I like the umps, it's human element. I'm like, no, human element is watching the players, not the yeah. umpires. You really need so, a human element of the official who's I, supposed to make sure every game is officiated the same way? I've always said that, too. I like the human element. Right. So yeah. you like but, the but, but, but you make a good point. I wasn't done talking. You interrupted me. I'm, like, I'm my own team. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. hey. No, but seriously, I do. I like the human element to the point calling balls and strikes. I like a good argument. I like, hey, man, where you got that one? Oh, I, I had it on the edge. Okay. You know, no, good umpires like, hey, go look at that one for me if you don't mind. Or an umpire is like, you get the ones that are like, yo, that's there. That's it. Enough, enough said. Then you see them at third base and they still think it was a damn strike. But I know, I know exactly what you're saying when it comes to that point. But the, the human element of balls and strikes – Banging a guy out of first when he was saved. All right, that's what we got the replay for. But, okay, on ball, even on balls and strikes, because I'm a robo um, guy, w when they get that figured out for automated balls and strikes, mm -hmm. can you imagine it's games? I'll just paint the, the ultimate. It's game seven, World Series, mm -hmm. you're up. 3-2 for Frazier. Bottom nine, team down three. Here comes the pitch. It's like Levon Hernandez strike, five feet off the plate. And he's like, 
see ya, your fucking season's over, baby. Yeah. How would you feel then? You'd say, fuck human element. all day. I would be pissed probably. I'd That's be, I'd be life. like right here in his face like yeah. this, you know. I hope you sleep better at night, you know, that kind of deal. <laughs> I got Eric Kratz in the back waiting for you. Yeah, I'd be like, you said, stuff like yeah. that. But yeah, no, like, 100%. That's your life. That's your, that's, like, you, that's you, it. you no. play the game your whole life to get to you, a moment. You and hope if they're you get bad. screwed. You hope they take the outside noise out of it and what happened last year or what happened the day before. That's how not many people are those nowadays. It's like they don't forget that. Like, you, you came after me. Now I got to get you back. No, that's not how it works, especially in a profession, you know. But I, the World Series. To, to be yeah, fair, this guy. I mean, Jesus. No, 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 no. I, I understand his. I understand his 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 argument at that end of the spectrum. Yeah. But the World Series, they put the best umpires there. They do, but they, they still make mistakes. They do, but it's way less. And on and remember what Joe West said: the Quest Tech system or whatever it's called now, they're still making more mistakes with that. So the Robo system's not perfect yet. Yes. And, and so we have to get that perfect. I do love the human element, but not in situ- no, this is the worst part of the human element. And back to the whole ring thing, what could he do? What, what could he do? It's in his glove. Yes, he takes, he takes his glove off. And what guys used to do, Rawlings used to make gloves that had the loops. And the leather loops used to be metal. So guys would sharpen that. They'd cut the ball. And then you'd have, let's say you only threw 90, but you cut the one side. <laughs> It's like, it's a cutter. It's a slider at 90 miles an hour. Cause you're just throwing a four seamer and they cut it. And that ball was, that was, it would go that way. So yes, you could put your ring on, but they banned that then because guys were cutting the ball with their ring. It's the whole reason for the Kalo ring. It's like, now he's banning that. There's no, so would you have an issue with it? If Adrian Johnson was able to come out and say something afterwards. To me, I think that would that would bridge that divide yeah. of you say like you Without shouldn't be doubt. seen. No, these people are umpires. They bust their balls so much the entire season. They are on the road. They're road warriors an entire year. They're in they're in airplane flights early in the morning. They're in hotels the entire season. So there's a human element there that I think if we just say Hey, I want to hear from the umpire. Boom, real quick. Hey, we're not getting into, hey, what's wrong with your, you know, how's your family? I, I get that. That's not, that's not where it's at. They're not <clears throat> the athletes. Yeah. But let them say something. Just give them a mic. Give them an interview after the game. Why not? I mean, oh, yeah, if the game goes fine, not the problem, he could go. But because yeah. I think writers are partial. Yeah. R- writers are, I mean, writers are impartial. They're impartial. Well, yeah. They do They're, the pool reporter thing, which is weird. I'm just like, can you just. Well, can we just if, if there's a situation that needs to be explained after the game, can you just bring the get all to the parties? Press just get all just, parties. Just take ten minutes of questions. Just get all parties. And if just, just lay it out, human element. I want to hear from the human. That's, so so to me, you still have the human element. Let's hear from him. Yeah, that's and all. that would give like let's say he's having a pissy day. Whoever whoever had the issue with it, and he's like, they put a mic in his face. Hey, why did you make him take his rubber ring off? Were you afraid he was going to do something? And he's like. I just didn't want him to have it on. Okay. Then you're like, all right, well, that guy was pissy. Or he that. says in rules, this, this, and that. You're like, yeah. okay, then you're fair like, enough. Fair yeah. enough. Yeah. yeah, I learned something. <laughs> well, let's get an explanation. We'll make it up because he can't talk about it, I guess, afterwards on the beef that Adrian Johnson had with Derek Shelton the day before. That's why this series had a lot of heat. A lot more wins. Oh, and now Shelton's into it. With the third base umpire, the crew chief, Adrian Johnson. Yeah, something with the pitch clock. I think he thought that there was a violation. So, Luke Shelton. Walcott. Had a little exchange last night. And then Adrian Johnson, the crew chief, and... Now we're getting Derek Shelton. Complicated, complicated conversation yeah. going on now. He's got he's got something for everybody. Well, last night it was Adrian Johnson and Derek Shelton, you know, with the, the Hedges situation. 
that, that, that series, I even bumped, three. He bumped him at the end. I'm not letting that go. I'm he's, not letting that bump he's, go. He's, no. I, thought, I thought Manny did a good job. I thought, I thought Manny did, did a good, good job. job. But, but yeah, no, he, no. That he, continued, he, too, by no. the way, when Shelton was, was out. Yeah. Then, then Johnson's chirping with, I think it was, who's in there? Don Kelly, right? Yeah, yeah. Don yeah. Kelly. Oh, he, he's going Kelly. like, okay, okay. Oh, like, he got, he, much. If a player did that to an umpire, it would have been blown up. I'm Suspended. I'm, you get suspended. Just for a little nudge. He did right. nudge him there. So write that in your report, too. Like, he did a good job. Manny did a good okay. job, but, you know. Let him go. Don't go near. Don't go on him like he's ready to attack somebody. Oh, he got his point across. You don't. You don't. As an umpire, if somebody's chirping at you during a pitch, you hear boom. After the pitch, you go, man. You, you don't do it during. I, I don't know. It's a whole bunch of stuff going on there. I respect Shelton going after. You know, trying to help his team out. Love it. I. I, don't, I love got going bumped. If, no, what no. I, I, I don't no, know. No, I'm saying like if the ump bumps you. No, I, I point. I said, you bump. I would yeah. exaggerate. Right here. <laughs> this is where you bump me. That's where you should and take I, the and charge. And if you were the umpire, I'd be like, this is where you bump me, right here. Like, you crazy. see? And then my whole argument would have been gone. I'm like, I'm writing that in my report. <laughs> you bump me. We'll go back to the video. And then it would be a whole different another side. It would be another five minutes. Yep. Yeah, I would Fine, drag that out. Suspension exactly. for them. For them. Yeah. Hey, I'm calling your boss. What happens if I did that to you? My arm is hurt. <laughs> my, my arm is bruised. <laughs> We'll try. I'm not going back. <laughs> no, but the, the, it didn't. It didn't like Shelton was pissed. He was yeah. clearly pissed, and Adrian was listening to what he had to say. Whether or not I like the way he was standing there listening, that's not to for me to judge. You know, he was kind of like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then when yeah, I, I, I respect that. That's fine because he's got to stand up. He's not going to be like, oh well, you know. So he was standing up to it, and then yep. Shelton was like. You, he said something like, you got a something. And then he said, you got a F. He repeated the same thing, but with an F. And, and then yeah. Adrian came at him. Like, he came at him, and it was like, and then it was just, there was just no idea of what he said after that. <laughs> what Shelton that. said, and I mean, he was just like, no. Nah. And he did that one. That's where yeah. I would start to get, and I'm pretty sure everybody would get heated. If you say something and you're in an argument, and the guy's barking at you. You're barking at him. It's kind of like mutual. And then he goes, this like guy. that. <laughs> Ooh, opens up a can what? of worms. Yeah. Like, I forget, I forget what movie it was. He's like, oh, oh, he, he turned his back to me. I, I almost kind of, oh, it's in Dumb and Dumber when he's knocking on the, he's not, he's like, get off the phone. Yeah. And the guy like turns his back. He's like, oh, he turned his back on me. I'm, I'm almost mad. Like, you know? <laughs> and that's when he calls him back yeah, and he love, just punches right through the glass. <laughs> that's exactly what like, that's love what it. happens when somebody turns their back on you. He's like, love a good argument. Love a good argument. Hey, ready to make some money. And then we're going to yeah, really make go. some money on these cards, but Woo. let's do our uh, Thursday locks. Oh, first off, I'm let's look back for bet MGM. And yesterday, Adam Jones stays Hot as hell with the Braves money line. Hey, it's a good pick right now. You know how many, on that note, how many stolen bases Acuna is on pace for now that he's got 15? Hmm. Don't think about the math again. Just quick. 75. 72. 87. Woo! 87. But two days ago, he was on pace for wow. 70. So. Because he had 13. Yeah, now he's at 15. Yeah, that's yeah. Let's, 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 pump, let's pump the brakes. He got hit in the shoulder. He's coming out to not get yeah. all the <laughs> all the stolen bases he's, that he could. Uh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm winning that bet over 70. Let's over go. 70? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Well, uh, yeah. You're not that confident. I'm, I'm, I'm confident. Okay. Com <laughs> Com with an M. Confident. With an M. Confident. Confident. Uh, AJ and I collabed on I'm still hot. I'm still hot. No, you are collabed on a run. <laughs> For all my last two because of rain. Swept. So you, yeah, you're Mr. Boyd <laughs> right now. I'm saving everybody the, the defeat. We don't have to watch your games. Like, yeah. I, I like to follow I'm going to have our, a backup just in case. I bet. You got a backup. My 9U game tonight. Okay. <laughs> Listen, it's guaranteed <laughs> the no, weather's nice. That was yesterday, first of all. <laughs> so that's uh, AJ and I on the Brew Crew with Miley Oof. losing again. Brewers get mm. swept out of there. And... Uh, Tough. We push it forward to where we're at. So I, I got 16 and 10. Kratz is at 8 and 16. Todd Kratz. Father's right there level. <laughs> I'm still down. And though. you I threw really... down, though, on that one to try to get yourself back above I water. Did. I did. But on that note, like, you're not checking where the water's yeah. at. Like, yeah. you got to know <laughs> what is under the water. Four days. So <laughs> let's, let's run our BetMGM locks of the day. 
for Friday, Nerfy Friday, but let's start with the picks. Todd Father? Yeah, I'm, I'm going on stats alone here. I'm going on numbers, and I'm not a numbers guy. I'm more of a C guy. Mm-hmm. I know the Cardinals are playing the Detroit Tigers, okay? And I also know, let me explain this to you, that the Cardinals lost 10, thank you, Eric, out of 10 first game in the opening series. Every series they played this year, they've lost the first game in that series. That's 10 out of 10 losses. And they're at, Tigers are at plus 185. And if my math is correct, I'm going 200 to win 370. All right, 370. Two to win 370. We're going to get back in the mark. Tigers are hot. Just took down the Mets. I'm going on numbers today. And I'm not the numbers guy, but I love it. We'll see what happens. I love that your game's not going to get postponed. <laughs> like, because I'm with Scott. Yeah. Like, I love checking to see our, our picks. Like, yeah, I'm like, I oh, it's too. postponed? I do, too. I'm like, where's Todd's game? And it says down the bottom, rain out. <laughs> Two in a row. But, hey. And I'm going hard today. I'm, I'm telling everyone today. So, let's let's have a night. I did that a few days ago. I, I didn't. I just picked one day where I did it. That was the sweep day. Yep. So, today's the day again. It's Friday at Cinco de Mayo. What are you doing? I'm going Sean Manaya. Oh. Sean, the big fella with the big, big worm. The big worm, big Under worm. five and a half Ks versus oh. the Brewers at plus 120. Oh, my. Sean Manaya has I... one game, one game this year where he had eight Ks. Numbers. Every, every other game he's gone three, two, three, four. That's his second most. And one. Sean Manaya under the Brewers have – they're, they're middle of the road in strikeouts as a team. So mm-hmm. it's – I need my guy to – it's a little bit of an uptick with lefties. Okay, yeah. But five and a half when he's only eclipsed that once, we're going with it. At 120, putting Numbers. 200 we're, down. We're about the numbers 200. today. 200. There and you go. Yep. Need that 240 Woo! to win 240. Let's Appreciate go. You. And I, I'm just like, you're waiting for the Brewers to have a – I'm pissed they're off going game. To. They're yeah. going to. I'll go Cleveland. Money line. Great series this weekend. Yeah. You got Cleveland and Minnesota. The Guardians winning the division last year, and okay. the Twins are in front right now. The Twins are also favored to win the division. So, big series. Cardinals have, uh, Guardians have lost five consecutive series, but the Twins didn't look good against the White Sox either. They lost two out of three. It's Bailey Ober, who's actually pitched decently well. Peyton Battenfield, who I just want to see because I haven't gotten to watch him pitch much, but hasn't looked good the last two. I'm, I'm looking at this one more on the battle of the bullpens, and I, I give the edge to Cleveland. That's why I'm, I'm going this route. Love it. I think Cleveland's going to say, hey, this is our damn division. <laughs> Their bullpen is nasty and much more rested than the Twins. Their bullpen got beat up the last mm-hmm. few days. They got a lot of work. So that's where I'm heading. It's plus 105. Uh, to, so putting out a hundo to win 105. And it is Nerfy Fridays for BetMGM. So opt into the promotion in the app, place a no run first inning bet on any MLB game. So you just bet no on the part when you click into the game where it says, will there be a run in the first inning? If your bet loses, but only one run is scored during the first inning, you receive a bonus bet back equaling your stake up to 25 bucks. Bonus bet will be reflected once the wager is settled. It's only available on Fridays. Make sure to read the full terms and conditions of this promotion before participating. Always bet responsibly. Gambling problem or concern? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. And quickly, before we open up some packs, Nerfy picks. I'll go first because it's the same game. I'll go Twins-Guardians because it's pretty tight. It's it's minus 115. I mean, it's not two big-name starters, but I I think they'll come through on that one. I think both of them are going to play up. I think it's going to be a low-scoring game in general. Who's up? (laughs) We all went almost... I mean, pretty pretty low. I mean, often you, yeah. you pick on a pitching matchup where it's like, oh, it's Stroman and Lazardo. They neither of them. I'm giving up runs. Yeah. It's minus one fifty. Like, I see yours, Kratzy, that that you submitted. It's pretty low. One, one yeah, 10. yeah, one ten. I got I got Washington versus um, Washington versus I'm Arizona. blanking Arizona, Arizona. With, with Merrill Kel- Kelly throwing, Josiah Gray throwing for Washington. The like. Nerfies. I'm so nervous about the aces going out and nerfies where you're like, they're kind of just trying to get their footing and that's the one or two runs in the first inning. But so I, they're not, they're not aces. Merrill Kelly is had a great year, like a three Oh six ERA Josiah gray. And the Nats have been, they've been hot. Haven't been scoring a ton of runs, but they've been hot. So I really like that, especially at one ten. I'm I'm all over that. I like it too. Yeah, and I'm stick. I'm not sticking. I'm going with Texas Rangers at the Angels. Just going out on a whim. I'll Tyler Anderson on the bump. He's really good. Dane Dunning. 
We'll see what happens. It's, okay. it's kind of out on a whim kind of thing. It's almost even money there, yeah. which is even, which is good. Yeah. So we'll I mean, see. They're they're leaning towards thinking there's a run. Yes, sir. One. Todd Father says no. Let's see what happens. Uh, good luck on your bets tonight. Good luck. Good luck. And good luck to us. Todd Father has been. I mean, he's been like. Doing this, licking his chops all day. I've gotten multiple texts in the past week. It's like, what are we, what are we ripping? So it's been a couple of weeks. Let's uh, bring on our guy, Nate, from Slab Stocks and get after it and rip some packs. <laughs> Nate, Romans what's up, brother? Here. Nate, what's going on? Good to see you, man. What's up, fellas? How are you guys? Good, man. Uh, good. We, we, we might be really good after we get through this. So, and, and let's get right to it. Yeah, Top Father's got the that got the good well, stuff. We the Bowman Heritage, um, twenty two. Got Vladdy on the box here. What are we looking for in this one, Big Doggy? Uh, so there's Bowman Heritage is a newer product. It came out in twenty nineteen and then twenty twenty, and then they didn't uh, bring one out in twenty twenty one. They brought both twenty twenty one and twenty twenty two out at the same time. Um, as for what you're looking for, you have. Rookie autos in here. Um, Bobby Wood Jr., CJ Abrams, Julio Rodriguez, Spencer Torkelton, and Wander Franco. Those are the only rookie autos. Otherwise, you also have uh, prospect autos. And personally, you know, I'm going to say it again. As Brewers fan, we're looking for Jackson Churio today. But if we can't get that, we'll go for Ellie De La Cruz. Okay. Do you have a list? Do you have a list of like while we're opening these? Are you like where? Because I remember when we used to get the Beckett, the Beckett trading card book. I would only yep. look at what the most valuable ones. I just skim <laughs> through the list. What's the most valuable one that we could pull today? Because that's what Todd's looking for. He's looking for big time. Um, I mean, it depends on, it depends on, obviously who it is. But there are some big prices. Uh, Orange Auto of Jackson Churio. I mean, not huge prices per se. Um, but Orange Auto of Jackson Churio just sold the other day for like six hundred bucks. Um. Uh, oh, I got Bowman's best already written in. I was expecting uh, Bowman's best. My bad. Um, so we use a thing called Card Ladder. If I could type it in right. <laughs> What's that called? One it's second. Cool, One like... second, guys. Um, so the top selling card from Bowman Heritage 2022 so far is a Julio Rodriguez rookie auto number to 99 PSA 10. 1350 bucks. Bowman Heritage Julio out of 50, 900 bucks. Bowman Heritage Jackson Churio out out of 25, 800. So there hasn't been a ton of sales yet. So maybe we can hit something that's even better than those. Hold on, real quick. Can you zoom that camera in on me, real quick? I'm uh, here, I, got, I got the goods. You I got, got the goods. We got a Julio Rodriguez rookie here. Oh. You got to talk to me about I'm it. Gonna, I'm going to place. Is that the one we're talking about? Is it autoed? No, oh, it's not it auto, but it's still – oh, is it numbered on the back? I didn't even look. Is it numbered on the back? I think the numbers are on the front, so that might just be a green foil uh, uh, parallel. I got a Frazier, by the way. Me? Uh, Me? On the Pirates. <laughs> oh, big, it's Matt. Matty Frazier. Take a look. Matty Frazier. It, it does, it's, it's not worthy enough to go on there because I, I, uh, <laughs> I don't think he's – Are those the, uh, those the uh, museum collection cards from last time? Yeah, oh, but, yeah, the other one. Yeah, yeah, behind it. Yeah, we we, we got the good ones did behind say, it. So did you say? Have them. Did you say Bruhan? You're looking for or no? Did you say that name? Uh, no. not Vidal Bruhan. No. 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 Um. So basically, with this set, essentially, we're looking for color. We're looking for auto. But there's only yeah. one auto in the box. Oh, so gonna it's going to be the Bowman yeah, best. That's a little bit better. So I, I did have. I mean, of what I pulled so far, I had a couple that are like. Okay, so when you say. Like, yeah. we're looking for shine here. Like, I like this. Does this? Here you go. Check this out. Put the, no, put this one on. This is 193 out of 199. We got Blaze Jordan. Blaze Jordan's oh, a player. Yeah, yeah. Blaze Jordan is a player and a big card collector. But he is a big is, card collector. He is a big card collector, but I'm going to I'm gonna go to. Blaze, I'll, I'll sell it to you. 100 grand. Hey. No, no, no. Your signing bonus. <laughs> hey, <laughs> save, you save your money, Nate. Don't, don't be taking his. I got one for you right here. It's a colored card. Ooh. It's a brewer. Ooh. Okay, see? See, I got you. <laughs> 48 of 99. Okay. Sal Freelick. Ooh, too Put bad he heard it. I know my guy Nate loves a good brewer. <laughs> I do love, love a good brewer. Him. I wish Sal Freelick was healthy to take Garrett Mitchell's spot. But yeah, fair. He will be. He'll be back soon. 
do be back. He'll be back. Do we have any value with any of this right now? Nice cards. Um, let me look up that Sal because that would probably be the most likely to have some value. But these are not um these are not first year prospect cards or um you know Bowman first or anything. So it's really the with Bowman Heritage specifically, we really are going for uh that color auto, uh hopefully, or uh color of some of the bigger prospects that just came out. Like Jackson Churio came out in twenty twenty two. So we're also hoping for a Jackson Churio in this type of thing. Or Ellie De La Cruz came out in 2022 as well. Whereas Sal Prelick was a 2021 rookie, 2020 rookie. Okay. Is there is there a is there a, a certain person that you're like, okay, while I'm not getting maybe this card today as expensive, you know, as it's worth a lot, is there a card where you're like, I'm kind of wanting to keep some Brian Bayos or you know, I got a I got a Matt Frazier here with 104 out of 199. Like, are there cards that you're like, ooh, like I'm I'm keeping that one, and maybe even going and getting the autograph yourself. It's true. Yeah. So what you're saying is what people in the card hobby like to affectionately call putting it in a box and putting it away. Mm -hmm. uh, so you buy you buy a box of cards, you store the cards, and then maybe five years down the line, you have something in there that is worth what you paid the box for um in this checklist specifically um you know there's guys like colson montgomery i might like to put away george valera just to see what happens henry mendez who i'm a sucker for because he's a brewer's prospect um <laughs> jose ramos who's been doing really well for the dodgers in in the minor leagues this year like would be of interest as well and as we've been chatting, there's a lot of activity going on as we've been chatting, okay? So first off, I'm going to take some of these off of here. Um, and do Ooh, some an orange. Nice so first color. off, you see this one? Yeah, orange out of 25. I like it. Yeah, 7 out of 25. Is that Beckley? Is that what it says? There's another number. We got another number? I got an auto, too. Ryan, Ooh, let me throw that there one. There we go. Oh, oh you got the auto. Oh, oh, good. Oh, oh, baby. You got the auto. Sorry. Sorry about it. You guys were too busy talking about saving cards and I got a Jay Allen Reds prospect. Ah, uh, Jay Allen. That is um that is not who we're hoping for, but I will say ah. the Reds, the Reds uh minor league system is like as good as it gets right now. You guys seen the numbers some of those guys are putting up? Yeah, Matt McClain, and and... Strand, right? Yeah. Another Julio rookie. See if he, if he thinks that's worth anything. All right, another Julio rookie in here. This one's I mean, a little fancier hey, on the back. Hey, Nate, back in the day, whenever you got a rookie, like, those were the cards that you want. Nowadays, it's like, bro, you need the autographs, you need the numbers. It's nice to have, but the price-wise, it's just not where it usually is, no? It's not there. I mean, yeah. hey, 20, three years ago, you rewind three years ago, people would have loved yeah. to have had a rookie that they could grade you know you pull you buy a ten dollar box from retail you pull a fernando tatis yep. you grade it for eight bucks and you sell it for 50. um those days are gone so so nate help me out here because I, I i've still got more to display for you so what i want you to do for me is whichever one is is in your mind the most valuable we keep that one up and then tell me to take down the other two so for example i'm i'm, I'm even though it's an audio an auto i'm assuming this one's not Hey, it's a store, right? Because store it, box it yeah, for store. Jay Allen. But if if you want if you want a comp, the most recent Jay Allen Heritage card that sold was an orange out of twenty five for fifteen dollars. Right. So he's going down for now. He's in the back. Okay. So um, see, I I, I, mean, I got an Ellie De La Cruz, not numbered, just regular card, though. Ah. Yeah, gotcha. Understand. No, that's that's what I want to see. Like I got I got hassle. It's it's not colored. I got another number though. Uh, oh, okay. Taj Bradley, out of seventy five. Taj is stud. Let's look that up. So that's back up, and then you said yeah, the no. Julio is a no go, right? <laughs> not nothing crazy there on this Julio. Uh, no, honestly, guys. Um, you know how good the museum collection box was? Yes. This is the antithesis of that. <laughs> <laughs> it's what happened. He keeps it real. Well, you know what that means, too. We're going to have to pull something. I thought, I think this is really cool. Playing for his dad. I got Darren Baker here, first card, man. Well, nope. I remember when he was, that's, so, that's pretty cool. I think that's a unique one right there. Did you play for Dusty your entire Reds career? Um, most of it, not my entire yes. Reds career. 
Oh, uh, yes. I got Shohei, but it's just a regular. I want to open an Xbox. It's got four Chrome Autos. Yeah. The, the right. Bowman, the Bowman's best is really – that's the that's the golden ticket today. Oh, uh, let's, let's freaking do it. Rip this, John. Which, which one? Which one? Uh, you should start 22, with two, right? Wait, wait, wait. If you're going to do both, I would start with 2021 and end with 2022. But if you're only going to do one, then definitely do 2022. We're only going to do one. We'll do the, another one. Another Only because we're going to run out of time. Yeah. Uh, unless unless you guys want to be here all night. But I would say let's do one, and then we'll do one next time. So 21 or 22, big y'all. Your call. Uh, Well, 20, 2021 is much worse. The rookie class doesn't look as bad now that, like, Jared Kelnick is playing well and Taylor Walls is playing well and William Contreras is playing well. But 2022 is worth that. All right, 2022. Yeah, we're, you know, the way we operate is, like, what if there's no tomorrow? We got to pull it today. It is yeah, Cinco de Mayo, Nate. Yeah. Hey. You guys doing anything special? I got a baseball game tonight. <laughs> Let's go. So we're going to pizza we're gonna night at the house. Ooh, Bowman's we go. Let's, Let's go. go. I'm oh, still oh, finishing oh, up oh, this. We got extra fast. I did get another number. Yeah, no, you got to get uh, Rojas There should be, there should be two autos in each mini box. What's up? Oh, go. Two autos in each mini box. Yeah, that's awesome. Let's go. I right, got a better chance of Scott not opening the. So is it is it four autos in the whole master box or in each yep. box? Two two autos in each mini box, four autos okay. in the whole thing. Be gentle now. I know. I yeah, know. be careful. I mean, how are you open that, John? Now, quick oh, this quick is... rundown. Um, these are like three hundred forty-five dollar boxes online. Three hundred fifty dollar boxes. How much online. dollar boxes? Three forty-five. Three forty-five. Um, you have your rookie class. It's really good. Wander Franco, Julio good Rodriguez, on, Bobby Witt, place. Jeremy Pena. <laughs> I'm hot right now. Hey, um, but then you also have prospect uh, autos. So, okay. Real. So who do we? Who do you want us to pull out of this one? Besides um, the brewer, I got a well, brewer right here. Be, besides, besides Churio, of course. Uh, obviously, any of the rookies. But if you could pull, you know, Jackson Holiday, Jordan Lawler. Uh, James Woods, Marcelo Meyer, Tamar Johnson, guys like that. That'd be really cool. Oscar. We got Colas, a Jordan Zach Lawler, Nito. not auto though. Colored? No, I don't. I don't think it's colored. No. No. We got. We got. Uh, These oh, are numbered on the back, right? We got a Volpe um, water. It says underneath it. I don't know. Like, put that one up though. One? Oh, I got uh, O'Neill Cruz rookie card, not numbered though. Ah. Yeah. No, I, I, I so we pain. need we need numbers or autos, right? C correct. For it with most of this stuff. So the back of this one says TP four, the Jordan Lawler one. No, you need. It needs yep, that's the card number. And oh, that okay. water bullpe is an insert set. Gotcha. You're an absolute mensch of this. Wait, stuff. but like refractor it. doesn't do anything. Like Alec Thomas or Ezekiel Tovar, it doesn't matter. Uh, I mean, if they become the really good, that's a definitely a put in a sleeve, put in a box, put in a sleeve, put sleeve in a it box. up. Okay. Okay. Hey, how you about this? I got, I got an auto. Let's go. And it's your boy, Darren Baker auto. Oh, stop it. No way. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Dusty. Yeah. There you Dusty, go. we'll have to send that one to him. Yeah, we'll put Darren up there. Give him a little love. Yeah. There we go. All right. Who are we taking down, Nate? Who's getting that? Um, well, you might as well take down the uh, Taj or the Volpe a... or Volpe. Hey, Aaron Judge, though. Take both. So, so far, the best thing we've pulled today is, is Beckley. Never heard of this guy. Well, it's, or it's orange chrome. <laughs> oh. Yaisan yeah. Morabell from the Texas Rangers auto. We'll put that Ooh, one. that's not bad. I think he's doing pretty good this year. Okay. Yaisan. Oh. I like his signature, too. There's some really cool signatures out there. Boom. See, like, to me, this is, like, you pull a Mike Trout. Like, That's I just feel like you got to be juiced about it, but it's not an auto. I get that. It's not even a numbered card, but... To me, you got still got to be juiced about it. But that's that's how I used to yeah. collect cards. No, I'm, I'm yeah. doing some things now, okay? So, first off, I pulled a Junior Perez auto. Nice. From the Oakland A's. Any numbers on these bad boys? We hit three autos. I didn't see a number on mine, no. So I got a refractor nice. auto for yeah, I got this for Junior. Hold Henry on, Davis. Though. Here Henry comes. Davis is a stud. Henry. 
Hey, like even even this, it's called a global impact card. I want so the fans can see. Like it's not a card. Just show just show that of Shohei Otani, not numbered or anything, but it's just like a different piece. Mm -hmm. if, if we can zoom in on that, like that that's just a nice card, little, isn't it? Little die cut. Is that that might be uh, that's atomic. So that might not be numbered, but it is it is um short printed. That's a sleeve. Okay, okay. that's a sleeve. Sleeve it up. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll put it. I'll put it. And then I, I got, I got Tovar numbered. We're looking for Jackson Holiday. Oh, Ezekiel Tovar. Yeah, Tovar, seventeen out of fifty. Nice. Hey, uh, that's not bad. I just watched that kid against the Brewers. That dude is good at defense. He is good. <laughs> that, uh, it's green. Dusty, we trust he's coming down, and, and Tovar is going up. Oh, we got a little Manny Machado green, uh, twenty-seven out of ninety-nine. I bet you the tow bar is worth more because it's a rook now. I would assume. Mm. Uh, what was the tow bar? Gold? Gold? Uh, also, that Otani is about 10 bucks raw. All right. Okay. The tow yeah. bar, how do I tell? Um, I mean, does it have a number on the back? This it's 27 out of 50. Okay, out of 50. Thank you. This one right here, I pulled another auto, and I get, I get excited when I pull the auto. <laughs> But I am going to give you get a little warm inside. Yeah, a little, a little, a little flowy. <laughs> this is this is a name right here, Nate. That I need you to tell me if this is a mistake. This one's number two. His name, his last name is Bernabel. Oh, you know warming. His first name, warming. Yeah, I've watched him live. I live in Spokane. I watched him at the Spokane Indians last year. Nice. Warming. My guy, warming. I love it. Hey, he's and it's he's an auto. warming. Bernabal. Is it numbered? Is it numbered? It is not. <sighs> Did they really give us no numbered autos? No Those numbered autos. Hey, there's one more pack. Okay. He's, well, I I, by we the way, I did auto. get uh, Bobby Witt Masterpiece, Bowman, and uh, Marcelo Meyer, but I don't think it's numbered. It's nice, though. Pretty Perspective neat. Good looking cards. They are so But that's nothing. Um, I, I will say at this – but it's not numbered. Ah. <sighs> See, that's what we were really <laughs> hoping for. Yeah, you heard his voice. That would have been an epic pull. He's like, I'm out of here. Uh, <laughs> De La Cruz, right, are we good. numbered? Damn. I mean, they're pretty, but they're not numbered. Did we get no numbered autos? They, I can't believe I can't believe that. Like, like we got cards like this. Like, so this, see this Ellie, but it's not numbered. It's just pretty. yeah. And we we got the same thing with Meyer. So that's it, huh? We we did yeah. terrible. Uh, hey, that's it. It makes it's a gamble with the other, but yeah. we don't have time. We'll do it next <laughs> time. I'm like, we got worked. It's fun, we you we uh you did. for all that good all that good mojo we had with the uh, one on one last time and stuff. You know what it was? I didn't have my Tatis back. It's really my oh, fault. Yeah, yeah, and he's back too. He's and, and back. The, and the dance. You didn't do the gritty for us. <laughs> <laughs> well, that ain't happening. <laughs> <laughs> Nate, this was fun, man. Um, we appreciate it. Happy Cinco de Mayo. We'll rip the uh, 2021 Bowman and pull something special next time. And we still have a bunch of boxes too. So yes. we'll, we'll pull in a couple weeks. Perfect. Thank you guys. And sorry, the, uh, sorry the, the hits weren't great. No. Hey, no. it's uh, just bad vibes today. Yeah. On Friday. We'll We're here for all of them. And, and <laughs> exactly. And, and well, what it was. Out. What's up? Real quick. What it was was that we didn't want Todd Frazier licking tequila off you guys. So. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> uh, there it is. Okay. Beautiful. That would have been in the slab stocks oh, newsletter. Man. Hide your eyes. This is a, this is no longer a family <laughs> newsletter. So, and you can check out slab stocks on socials as well. So, Nate, appreciate you. Happy Friday, man. Thanks, bro. All right, thank you guys. See ya. That was good. All right, so first off, because it's running this weekend again, I want to show you Legends Territory, which is brand new. Johnny Damon just was released the other day, and we'll put that up on the Foul Territory podcast feed as well on the weekend. So we just want to give you a little, little piece, just a little taste of what Johnny brought to the table with AJ and myself. 3-0. Were you doing naked pull-ups and yeah, in the clubhouse? I, I still do them, you know? Well, uh, Michelle, <laughs> I'm so sorry, Michelle, if you're out there listening. Well, um, well what came about the naked pull-ups is we had one of the smallest training rooms. Oh, yeah. um, and so we had a tub, we had two tables and we had our weights um, in the same area about this size so i would get in the tub and waiting 
I have wet shorts on and waiting to get on the table to get taken care of. I uh, wanted to take my shorts off and try to get guys out of the clubhouse. So if they saw my butt and my other stuff, they would <laughs> they would get out quicker than uh, normal. So it worked out. That better thing. Giambi's thong, the golden thong, oh, yeah. or you were doing naked pull-ups. Oh, boy. I got a number of hits with that golden thong. So uh, You did. Um, oh, yeah. I I needed it a few times, you know. If, so would you wear it under your uniform? Um, or were you just wearing a BP? or where was No, you, you would wear it during the game. Oh. Yeah. He was a gamer. Yeah. So, I mean, if you need hits, you do whatever it takes. True. People don't understand that. Is that thing in the Hall of Fame or something? It should be. It yeah. should be, right? Does he still <laughs> yeah. have it, you think? You know, I'm sure he does. Yeah. It's <laughs> like It'd be a worth scavenger something. hunt and see if we can find it. It's worth more than anything we just pulled in our packs. So, <laughs> <laughs> territory, untold stories, unfiltered takes, and the biggest names in baseball history. Episodes drop every Wednesday on the Legends Territory feed and the show, of course. You can watch it all on YouTube, and we'll run the podcast version again on Foul Territory's feed this weekend. Now, let's slap hands. Nice sound. So I have a, a couple quick things. First off, I want to do the shout out, and someone actually just pointed it out to me. Uh, my computer's dying. Sports Kingdom, and we do have it prepared. Matt Harvey announced yeah. his retirement. I, I sent him a little little note. I knew him from back in his Chatham Cape Cod days. I said, cheers, man, and we'll bring him on soon. To the fans, most importantly, the Mets fans, you made a dream come true for me, a dream I never could have thought to be true. Who would have thought a kid from Mystic, Connecticut would be able to play in the greatest city in the world, his hometown? You are forever embedded in my heart. Goodbye, baseball, and thank you. 34 years old. Crazy, crazy. Well done. I, love, I played with him for a little bit. Yeah. Hey, good dude, man. Did you have a good time? Yeah, yeah, he had a good time. Yeah, so. yeah. Yes, very. He I, was the I, king I liked of the city him. for yeah, a little he was, bit. Yeah. He was, because the Mets, the Mets weren't good for a while. And no. the Mets, Mets made the World Series not no, that no long doubt. ago. It's like Mets fans are like, oh, we suffer all the time. Like, you were in the World Series not that long ago. Okay, no I know doubt. you lost to, you lost to Kratz. You couldn't handle the, hey. the smoke. But yeah. Yeah, he, would, he was he started the All-Star game. Yeah. In was, New York. Ooh, yeah. Like that like is 13 or 14? 13. 13. Yeah. He was, he was getting it. He was throwing some absolute Shutter. babies. Mm -hmm. Dark Knight. Yep. So appreciate it. Congratulations, you. Dark Knight. Yep. And then I just wanted to show you this uh, little screenshot of Tristan Cassis playing by the rules because um, he's still rookie status, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I saw this last night. I was wondering what the hell he was out. doing. And he's like, you know, he's just trying to visualize some things in the bot box pitch clock you don't have time to do that so he was in the ready position in, in the box ready to go and they were having a meeting on the mound that's a great shot right there that's good. that is the I pitch like clock discipline Error. Yeah. yes right there good good job and then <laughs> lastly that's for Kratz hats I do have a minor league call Ooh. out Matt Mervis for the Cubs is getting called up very curious to see power. what he looks like yeah power and he just blew up last year he went from a ball straight through uh made it up to triple a last year and then he was crushing things again um the last month so he's up we'll see what he looks like doesn't he have red hair too remember that Matt Murphy remember when he sure. came up with the Cubs he was a prospect too Matt Murphy yeah absolute right-handed just remember mashing <laughs> Either From the way. right side, line drive hitter. Anyway, congrats. Either Good way, luck. let's see your hat. Cool. What hat we got? We got the Lehigh Valley. I don't pigs. The camera's a little farther away, so we'll go over here on I this like that one. Pig. I it's like that. just, it's just a classic. Lehigh Valley probably has. They have a whole lids store in their clubhouse. Not, not in our clubhouse, but in like the team clubhouse where you can buy hats, and it's you can get every color. Every this is just the classic home hat that we would wear, and the. The logo is is legit. They're all about the bacon there. So, <laughs> Lehigh Valley Idol Pigs. I love. You, you ever have Nooski bacon, Nueski bacon, the thick cut slabs? No. You it's go to like a, a nice steakhouse and they have that for like an appetizer. You ever have it's the heart Nooski bacon? Mm -mm. <laughs> oh man, I like. I bet that Iron Pig had some. They have some good. They have good bacon slabs. on a stick. In Ooh. oh, it I is. I think Kratzy got started early on Cinco de Mayo. Are you talking about Matt Merton? Merton, not yes. Murphy, Matt Murphy. I, I was put like, I was putting players to together, nerd, but anybody no, no, no. in the uh, Matt late nineties and forward, like 
I feel like I know everyone. Yes. And prospect wise, was that Merton. Merton. That's the name Merton. that came out when it said Merton. Swing it. Yes. Swing it. Went yes. to Japan for a little bit. He there did. Come back. He did. Good call. call. Hey. Call. <laughs> and lastly, a shout out to our guy behind the scenes, production assistant, Jesse, graduating this weekend. So yeah. We appreciate you. Congratulations. We love the FT fam. A lot of good press out this week on Foul Territory. So we'll post all that on socials. We will see you next week. Thanks for chilling with us on Fraser Friday. <laughs>